Hello friends. This is Fanfic Universe. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto become the guardian of the sea, overpaired Naruto x One Piece crossover. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. It has been a year or so since Naruto left Konoha with Jiraiya on his training trip. The boy had grown thanks to him not eating ramen constantly and that was a good thing his book but he really missed ramen. Anyway, Naruto had mastered the basics by now and Jiraiya wanted to teach Naruto the more physical side of being a ninja. So, he was driving Naruto into the ground with taijutsu katas and muscle training. However, halfway through that, Naruto remembered his time in Wave Country and asked that old perv if they could go there, he wanted that sword. Once the boy got that sword, Jiraiya taught the boy in sword katas, even though he himself did not use a sword. Upon hearing this, Kisame grew enraged that some punk kid had gained Zabaza's old sword. So he left Itachi's side and went after the blonde brat and that was a very stupid thing to do. That was because Jiraiya was still with the boy and so the old hermit killed the fish man with little problem. However, near the end of that battle, Itachi appeared before Naruto, questioning his motives for training, towards Sasuke, and towards Konoha. Of course the blonde said he was training to take Sasuke back and protect everyone with his power. Itachi nodded and gave the blonde a large amount of his power through the use of a few crows going down the boy's mouth. After that, he left as Kisame died. Jiraiya returned to the blonde with Kisame's Samahata and gave it to the blonde thinking that only he would be able to use it since it drains chakra and Naruto had plenty to spare. Of course the blonde accepted that large sword and the blade for some reason accepted him as well. However, right now, Naruto was staring down Jiraiya in a ruined city. The reason for all this is because the old hermit decided to try and train the blonde in his Jinchuriki powers and it went horribly wrong because right now, Naruto is in his four-tailed form while Jiraiya was in his sage mode and losing even with the frog elders helping him. Naruto, snap out of it, the old hermit yelled, trying to get through the cubified team. All he got in response was a loud roar and a massive gash in his chest. Jiraiya boy, are you okay? The male elder toad asked in concern. I'll be fine, but I have to use this next move to hopefully weaken him, he said before coughing up some blood. Help me gain as much nature chakra as possible. The two toads nodded as the man jumped high in the air and began to form a very large Rasengan. Cho Odama Rasengan. He screamed out as he crashed down on the Kayubified boy with the giant attack, however, what he saw shocked him to the core. The Kayubified Naruto had formed an Odama Rasengan of highly condensed demon chakra and it was grinding on the larger attack like it was nothing. Grunting with exertion. Jiraiya pushed forward while adding more chakra to his attack. The cubified Naruto growled in anger before it released chakra in the air, getting ready for a tailed beast ball attack. However, the grinding of the two attacks was creating sparks of pure energy and when one of them hit one of the particles of condensed chakra in the air, it created a unique reaction. One explosion after another exploded around the blonde Jinchuriki and the force of that shot Jiraiya and the elder toads away from the blonde while they watched on helpless at what was happening to the blonde. Finally, the reaction hit the cubified Naruto and a rather large explosion appeared and engulfed Naruto, however in the inside of the explosion was something completely unexpected. Those explosions created a portal of some sort that was sucking in anything and everything and it sucked in Naruto as everything went to hell around him. Naruto returned to normal as he entered, but he as he reached out for the entrance of the portal, he lost consciousness. The last thing he saw was fire and the portal closing. XXX. Jiraiya and the elder toad stared at the spot of the massive explosion in shock. Naruto was gone, however, the elder toads did not feel the boy's name disappear from the summoning scroll, so that meant that the boy was not dead. They looked at the wounded man in sadness as he coughed up a lot of blood. Fukasaku sighed and performed the necessary hand signs to do the reverse summoning. Come one Jiraiya boy, let's get you to Suand. It was at that point that Jiraiya somewhat recovered from his shock and reached out for the blonde and called out his name as they warped to the Hokage's office. Naruto. XXX. Tsunade sighed heavy as Shizune brought more of the damnable paperwork to her desk and was hovering over her shoulder to make her she did her work and not drink. 
You can leave now Shizun. Okay. But let me just take this. The young woman said as she took a bottle of sake from Tsunade's hiding place, which made the older have anime tears on her face. However that all stopped when there was a poof of smoke and screaming. Naruto, yelled Jiraiya from his sitting position on the floor with a vacant look in his eyes as he fell on his back and passed out as the elder toad hopped off of him. Taking a closer look at the man, they saw that his clothes were all ripped up and burnt, he had many burns and gashes all over him, including a very nasty one on his chest. The fact that was coming out of sage mode as well was very troubling. My god, what happened? demanded Tsunade as she rushed to his side. It didn't help that Shikamaru and Hinata's team walked in from their combined mission at this point. Shima, the female elder toad, looked at Tsunade with a sad expression. Jiraiya boy tried teaching Naruto how to use his tenant's powers and it went horribly wrong. The boy is gone from this world. XXX. All was going normal in Kokoyashi village. People were doing their own things like working shopping, or relaxing. Nojiko was in town, dropping off some tangerines for the marketplace. Sighing as she looked out towards the sea, she could not help but smile as she thought about her little sister, Nami. However, that was interrupted when the air in the middle of the village began to whip around until a weird portal formed and outshot a 14 or 15 year old blonde hair boy and he crashed into a tree. After that, the portal fizzed out. Everyone blinked for a moment before they just gawked at what happened. Najiko and Genzo were the first ones to recover from their shock and rushed to the boy's aid while everyone else crowded around them. What they saw shocked them. The boy was in bad condition, if his peeled off skin was any indication. For a moment, the blonde regained conscious, cringing in pain. Genzo took that moment asked the boy's name. Boy, you're safe. What is your name? Uzumaki Naruto. The boy said before looking at the man, then at Najiko before passing out again. I can't believe it, Naruto heard someone's voice as he began to wake up again, but kept his eyes closed. What do you mean doctor? A familiar voice asked. How can you not know what I am talking about, Genzo? Just look at the boy. Naruto assumed the man was doing just that because he heard a gasp. My god, his skin. It grew back this soon. What are the chances of that doctor? Hell if I know. In all my years, I never saw someone regrow their skin like that in just a few hours. The doctor said. I am a fast healer. Naruto finally spoke, scaring the crap out of the two men. The blonde opened his eyes to see two men. One looked to be a doctor and looked quite old and the other was a man that looked to be a soldier of some sort and had a lot of scars on his body. So, where I am? Am I anywhere close to Konoha? The two men looked at each other and sighed. I'm afraid not boy. Genzo said, you came out of this weird portal and you looked like absolute hell. What the hell happened? Well, I was on my training trip with Jiraiya to sharpen my ninja skills and he decided to train me in my, other, power, but I could barely control it and I must have gone berserk. Naruto grimaced that that thought. I hope that old perv is okay. Well, we have no clue who this Jiraiya person is, so you must be very far from home. The doctor said. Well. With the way you came here, I am not surprised if you came from another world or something like that. Genzo replied. If that is the case, I am kind of screw on what to do now. Naruto replied with a deadpan expression as he tried to sit up only to fall back in pain. Arg, I thought my chakra would have regenerated by now. I guess using that chakra is more draining than I thought. Chakra, is that a devil fruit power? Genzo asked with a raised eyebrow. Devil fruit. I have never heard of that. Chakra is the energy in all living beings and it helps me use my jutsu. Ah, I am guessing that this other chakra you obviously don't like is the one that did that to your skin. The doctor stated. Yay, I was on the four tail. It hurt so much that I lost control. Naruto before he felt sleepy. Well, we'll talk later, it would seem that you need more rest. The doctor said as Naruto nodded and fell asleep. I would hate to have that power. Genzo stated, maybe he didn't have a choice in gaining that power. Nojiko said, entering the room after she heard half of the conversation. Then who forced such a self-destructive power on such a young kid? Genzo asked but got no answer. XXX. Naruto woke up again, but it was not the room he had awoken in before with those two old guys. 
This was the sewer that was his mind. Sighing, he trudged through the lower water that was there and proceeded to Kayubi's seal. On the way there, he noticed there was no malevolent feeling in the air and the sewer seemed to be cleaned up a bit. Making his way into the seal room, he noticed that nothing was grimy, the sewer system here looked absolutely new. Okay, this is weird. Weird it may be, but in this world, it has changed this place, and me. A loud voice said from in the darkness of the seal. The blonde was surprised to find no evil red eyes staring at him, only huge ass blue ones. Okay, now I am even more confused. Understandable since the last you saw me, I was evil and trying in vain to get out and kill you in the process. You see, Kit, this world is where we Biju are originally from and we are regarded as the guardian of the sea. Huh, Naruto intelligently replied, you forget that we Biju were originally the Ten Tails. The Ten Tails was revered by all humans of this world as a good guy, sign we protected the entire ocean. The fox said and it moved upwards to the cage and Naruto was shocked to find not red fur, but golden fur. When we found a portal to your world, we felt a lot of darkness and we decided to try and help, unfortunately that darkness affected us too much and we became dark ourselves. Now that I am back in this world, I can think clearly again. Wow, so your chakra won't hurt me anymore. Nope, but there is something that you must know. Since we were the old guardian of the sea, that makes you the new one and once you find our old temple, you will become the true guardian of the sea. Was not expecting that at all. Naruto replied with huge eyes. Yes well, you are about to wake up and I suggest you take a look in that cloak Jiriya gave for your 14th birthday, it will have some useful stuff for you to train with. Naruto nodded before he disappeared from the mindscape, leaving the good Kayubi to his own thoughts. The Kayubi's eyes widened, maybe I should have told him that when he becomes the true guardian of the sea, he will be immortal. Nah, he'll figure it out. XXX. Naruto's eyes opened and he was once again in the real world. He looked out the nearby window to see that it was barely morning out as the sun was barely over the horizon. Sighing, he channeled chakra to his right arm to reveal a large storage seal that Jiraiya taught him to create and released the cloak from within. He never noticed Nojiko in the desk chair a few beds down. She had seen what he did and barely contained her shock, but she kept her cool and stayed where she was, looking like she was asleep. The cloak was blank, but when he touched it again, the graphics change into something unexpected. The bottom looked to be a calm ocean with a small island on it and the rest of it was a clear blue sky. Whoa, he whispered quietly to himself. On the inside however was a multitude of seals that he recognized as more storage seals. Deciding to test one out, he gained four scrolls, all addressed to him. He picked one at random and it was yellow. Dear Naruto, I am your father, Minato Namikaze. Yes, I was the fourth Hokage. Now I know you must be really made at me, but there was no other person that I could seal the fox within. I would not ask another family to do what I could not. So please, do not be too mad at your old man, and please know that I love you. Now, in the cloak that you got from Jiraiya, is the forbidden scroll, the true one. You can learn a lot from it and all your family jutsu heck, maybe you can learn some of my most famous jutsu. Now, your birth was rather different. Your mother was not sure she could give birth due to her devil fruit powers, so we had our best friend, Kashina birth you. I would read her scroll next. Good luck, Naruto. Namikaze Minato. Naruto's eyes were a little watery at that. His dad actually cared for him enough to give him all this wonderful stuff and to make sure that his love got through. So taking his father's advice, he opened the red one that was from this Kashina woman. Hello Naruto. I am Uzumaki Kashina. Now, you may not be my real child but I will always think of you and my son, so please think of me as your second mom. The reason I am not there is because well, I am probably dead. You see, I am like you, a Jinchuriki of the Kayubi, dot the second one to be exact. The first one was Mito, the first Hokage's wife. Cool huh? Anyway, when a female Jinchuriki gives birth, it weakens the seal and well, there is one man that your father has been worried but and he should have died a long time ago. His name is Madara Uchiha. Anyway, like your dad, I left some water jutsu for. I don't know if this counts, but you might be Whirlpool Country's prince since I gave birth to you. That would be cool. Oh and before I forget, 
I had a special power that let me use chakra chains and I am not sure how it would mix with your mother's devil fruit power, but it will probably be useful. Kashina. Naruto smiled. This woman was really nice. Add to that fact she was like him made him a little happier. He did however wonder how she died, because if she was weak after giving birth to him and having the Kyubi released from her, someone must have taken advantage of that. Shaking those thoughts away for now and wiping his eyes, he reached for the purple scroll, which he hoped was his mother's. Dear Naruto, I am Nico Robin, I am glad that I had a son, even though it was through another woman, which you probably already know. I just was not sure I was able to have a child thanks to my devil fruit power. You see, the fruit was called the flower flower fruit. It let me create hands out of nowhere. However, to me, this power and my knowledge has always been a curse. I was called the devil child because of them and for being the only survivor of my island. That is another thing I wish to tell you. I am from another world, a world that is mostly the ocean and is full of pirates. My curiosity got the better of my one day and I ended up in the ninja world. My life was better here, but it would seem that if you were reading this, that I am either dead or was sent back to my world. If that is so, look for me at your own peril, because I am not that well liked there. But know this, I will be very happy to see you. I love you, Nico Robin. Naruto let the tears roll down his face with a sad smile. He was like his parents, yes he even considered Kashina to be a parent of his. He had loving parents and he was not abandoned like most of the villagers said. He was also surprised that he was part of this world and that he had a strange power because whatever devil fruit is in Kashina's chakra chains. All in all, he was very happy. Nojiko, from her position, really wanted to rush up and hug Naruto for whatever was making him sad, but she noticed that smile and didn't know what to do. Before she could do anything, he picked up the final scroll, which had a toad on it and he began to read. Yo Naruto, it is me, Jiraiya, so, guess if you are reading this, something must have happened to me or we got separated and you finally decided to look at what was in the trench coat I got you for your 14th birthday. So, if either happened, I have left a lot of training scrolls for you in the storage seal of the coat. One is the, key, to your seal, and if I remember correctly, Minato said something about it being used to make a new seal, but I think your dad left a scroll somewhere in the coat for you. Not sure. Next is training on elemental manipulation and some chakra cards to see which element or elements you are aligned to. After that, is sage mode training and a list of all the toads available to you. Trust me. You need to contact Ma and Pa Toad to begin your sage mode training. Do your best Naruto, I believe in you. Your godfather, Jiraiya, the gallant Toad Sage and the world's biggest super pervert. P.S. I also left you all the books I have created, including my first ever book and no it is not smut related. Oh and whatever a shadow clone learns, so do you. I can't believe you have no figured that out yet. He admits that fact he is a perv in the letter too. Jeez. Naruto thought with a twitching eyebrow before he did a double take. Godfather. He had a godfather that was a sage. Holy shit. Add into that fact about the shadow clone thing, he wanted to hit himself. This, is a lot to take in, he said to himself. Well, I am here. You can talk to me about it. Nojiko said. Widening his eyes, he let out a scream of fright. He had not been paying attention to his surroundings. Finally. Calm himself down to look at the amusing woman, he smiled and said. Hey, you scare me. How long have you been there? I spent the night here. I wanted to make sure you were alright. Oh and my name is Nojiko. The blue-haired woman said. I woke up around the same time you did. Oh, Naruto said and rubbed the back of his head. He was surprised that this lady, who didn't even know him that well, watched over him throughout the night. Hey. Thanks for making sure I was alright. Anyway, I just read some letters from my parents for the first time. Getting a questioning look he elaborated. I have been an orphan since I was born. Oh, I am sorry. Nojiko said sadly. Ah don't worry about. I learned how to take care of myself. Anyway, I read that my birth was a bit odd. He said, telling her all that he knew. And add on to that fact that the idiot perv that I have been training with was my godfather. Now I knew why he was not around, 
he had duties outside of the village and it was probably him that provided for since I knew old man Hokage could not do much with the idiot council breathing down his neck. Huh, oh nothing, I was not that well liked in my village because of what I have sealed within me. What they thought was a demon was something important here. Hey, I guess I really am like my mom since she is not that well liked here for her devil fruit powers. Wow, that is really something. Okay, who was your real mom and what is sealed in you? Nojiko asked, her head spinning with all the information the boy told her. We, oui, my mom said her name was Nico Robin and the Kayubi is the one sealed in me. Nojiko I the boy in shock. Wow, you mom is kind of infamous all right, but I think the world government is trying hide something. That is what they did with Nazumi after. Luffy got the blame and now he had a bounty of 30 million belly. She paused before sighing, but still, having the strongest part of the guardian of the sea inside you is a lot to take in, after all, it has been gone for a long time. Well, it is. Okay okay. Nojiko laughed at Naruto's stubborn face. So what are you going to do now? Well, Naruto began, I don't believe my mom is dead, so I am going to train here some more and find a ship. Nojiko blinked. Well, I guess that seems like a good plan. She laughed a little, I guess we finally have a use for Arlong's ship graveyard. When you get released, I'll take you there. Naruto smiled. Thanks Nojiko, I'd like that. XXX. Once Naruto was released, Nojiko took Naruto across the island and through a destroyed old village. Of course Naruto asked what happened, so on the way, she told her younger friend all about Arlong and how Luffy defeated him when her sister, Nami, asked him to. After that story, he really wanted to meet this Luffy and his friends. At the moment, Naruto was blankly staring at all the wrecked ships in the ship graveyard. Wow, maybe I should make my own ship with all of this. Do you know who to do that? Nope, chirped Naruto. Then how do you plan on doing this? Trail and error, smirked Naruto. All that in training, he said while creating a buttload of shadow clones. All right boys, let's get to work. Right. A loud chorus of voices responded. Nojiko stared in shock at what Naruto did before she sighed and said to herself. I have a feeling that he is going to throwing out a lot of unexpected things. Suan sighed heavily as she observed the village of Konoha. Ever since Jiraiya appeared in her office looking like hell, things in the village have been too quiet. She missed Naruto, but knew that the brat would not be coming back. Whatever happened to him, he was safe but unable to come back. Well, that was what Shima and Fukusaku had said when they met the blonde in the other world he had found himself in. So she sent over a scroll with all her medical know-how. She knew that the blonde idiot would not be able to use most of that stuff thanks to his horrible chakra control, but she hoped he found someone that could take care of him. Jiraiya had been in the state of pure shock for a whole week. It would seem he blamed himself for all that happened to the blonde, but she beat that out of him. Now he was in the village to stay and help wherever needed. Naruto's friends were all saddened when the news hit them. Hanada, Sakura, and surprisingly Ino, took it pretty hard. It seemed that Ino had a crush on her fellow blonde but was very good at keeping that secret, unlike the Hyuga heiress. Sakura seemed to be more depressed than any of them because she was the last member of Team 7. Kakashi was even later than usual to most things now, but after Sakura yelled at him, he stopped being late. He had taken the girl as a full-on apprentice like Tsunade had and she was a force to be reckoned with. Hell, even Neji was afraid of her. Konohamaru and his friends were really sad when they heard the news and renamed their group after the blonde. Uruka took it pretty hard, but Konohamaru hung out with the man to help him feel better. However, they were all surprised that Naruto could occasionally send them letters, so that they knew he was still alive. However, the people the most confused on how to feel about the situation were the villagers and thankfully they did not throw parties like Suan feared. Now she just had to worry about the Akatsuki. XXX. A now 15-year-old Naruto smirked at his ship. It might have only been two months, but he was happy with it. He got most of his training done and made a unique ship. And there was a lot of trial and error. The ship he made had the bottom half of a marine ship which had sea stone on the bottom of it and if some government ship had it, it must be a good thing. The top half was a mixture of some random boats and it looked pretty good, 
after he painted it and added a toad's head to the front of the boat. Speaking of toads, he made contact with a good number of them, well after Gamabunta almost crushed him for making everyone worry. After that, he met Ma and Pa Toad, and it seemed that this place was full of nature chakra and it seemed stronger in this world. So he was just in the begins of sage mode training and with the old toad whacking him all the time, there was not much progress. However, his normal ninja powers had gone well and thanks to the shadow clone jutsu, he had mastered a lot. The chakra cards told him that he had three elements, wind as his main and water and lightning as his secondary elements. He could use earth and fire but they were weak compared to the others. He even upgraded his Rasengan training. He still had the normal one but he took Jiriya's idea of a bigger Rasengan to a new level. Hell, he even added his elements to them. Finally, he had worked on his mother's odd power. He was able to create extra hands, but out of chakra, sort of like with his battle against Sasuke when he used Kyubi's chakra. It was very useful in his opinion. That in Kyubi's chakra didn't burn anymore nor was it red, it was gold. Nodding to himself at the work of his ship, B begun to walk towards the village. On his walk, he made his way through the formerly destroyed village that Arlong destroyed. He had made a few more clones outside of training to help rebuild the old village and people were very grateful to him, including Nojiko. He smiled as he thought of her. She was very nice to him and when he was not training, she was usually with him. He didn't know what he felt for the older woman, but right now he would call her his older sister figure. Hell she would sometimes try and train with him. She would mostly use guns, but that was good with her fast reflexes. Add to the fact that she could shoot chakra out of the guns made her more dangerous. Getting up to Kokoyashi, he noticed a disturbance and a large ship in the distance. Wonder what this is about. XXX. A few minutes earlier, Nojiko was about to go and find Naruto to see if he was alright. He did say that he was done with the ship, so he would be leaving soon. She wanted to ask if she could go with him, for some reason, she wanted to go out to sea with the boy. However, she didn't get the chance because she saw a large pirate ship heading straight for their island. She, along with everyone else in the village, was sweating bullets because the Jolly Roger of the ship was similar to Arlong's. When it docked on the island, their fears were confirmed. It was full of fishmen. A man, similar to Alrong, but a lot bigger, was in front of the fishman crew as he eyed the small village. Unlike Alrong, he wore a large blue business suit, his blue hair was spiked backwards, his nose was like Alrong's and he was very muscular. So, this is the place my son took over before the one called Straw Hat Luffy killed him. He paused for a moment. Sir, what is your business here? Genzo asked as he was near the towering man. The large suited fishman looked down on Genzo before he smirked. I am Oolong. Arlong was my son and he died at the hands of the one called Straw Hat Luffy, but since he is not here to receive punishment, I guess this island will do. Prepare to die. Over my dead body, a voice rung out that was familiar to the villagers. What? Who is the punk who said that? The towering fishman shouted. Me. Naruto appeared on top of a building with Zabaza's sword on his shoulder. Uzumaki Naruto. Never heard of you kid, but I doubt you can beat me. I am a fishman, a being superior to humans. Oolong shouted, showing where Arlong got his mentality from. Says you, do you want to bet on that? Naruto asked. Oolong eyed the boy on the building. That sword looked heavy, so who knows. He observed Naruto's choice of clothes. The blonde wore blue shinobi sandals, blue jeans, a red shirt, black fingerless metal plated gloves, and an ocean view like trench coat, only the ocean looked to be getting ready for a storm. The boy also wore a headband but it was used as a belt, but he had never seen that weird symbol before. Hey! You got spunk kid! Sure, I'll take that bet! Where do you want to battle and what are the stakes? Naruto narrowed his eyes, Arlong Park, now if I win, your crew is to get the hell out of here, but if I lose, you can do whatever you want. Oolong smirked, this would be a piece of cake. Fine, meet me in an hour. Boys, Oolong shouted, getting the attention of his crew. Do nothing until the battle is over. Right boss. They yelled. Oolong turned back to Naruto with an evil smirk. I can't wait. XXX. Naruto stood in front of the wrecked gate to Arlong Park, a bit nervous. 
Nojiko stood beside him, looking in worry. Do you really want to do this? I have to Nojiko-chan. Otherwise you all will be dead. Naruto replied with a serious face. I don't want anything happening you guys, especially you and the old man. You have done so much for me, now it is my turn to repay the favor. Najiko looked at him sadly for a moment before she pulled him into a hug. Be safe and come out of this alive, she whispered. Nodding, Naruto hugged her back, before letting go and walking into the park just as most of the village showed up to watch as they did with Luffy and his crew. I hope that boy will be okay, Genzo quietly said. Damn it, I should have stopped him. There is nothing we can do now, Najiko said with a few tears in her face. XXX Naruto walked in to find that all the fishmen were at the far end of compound and Oolong was standing in the middle on the place with a smug look on his face. You have guts kid, I will give you that, but you won't win, no one ever does when they fight me. I have 70 million belly bounty on my head, that shows how tough I am. I don't care, I won't let you win, I am fighting to protect those precious to me, Naruto shout back to an amused Oolong. Fine, it is your funeral, oh wait. You were probably going to die with all of them anyway. Ha! Huh? The fishman laughed. Naruto narrowed his eyes and got into a fighting stance, Oolong doing the same. When one of the fishman coughed, they took that as the signal to begin. When they meet, Naruto found just how strong the man was. He was punched in the gut, knocking the wind out of him, and it sent him across the lot. See, I told you that you did not have a chance. He said, turning around. However, he heard crumbling as Naruto picked himself out of the rumble. That was unexpected, but back home, I am known as the most unpredictable ninja and I am not a dumbass like I made myself out to be. Naruto said with a bloody smile as he disappeared in a poof of smoke. Oolong eyed the spot the blonde had been in shock before he calmed down and dodged an attack from the left. Seems there is more to you than I thought. This will be fun. He yelled as he grabbed the blonde by the leg and slammed him into the ground and then stomped on him. The Naruto he crushed went up in smoke like the other one. So another decoy, but I doubt you can keep this up for long. Says you, Naruto said from high in the air, Shadow Clone Jutsu. He yelled and the area was filled with 100 clones. 100, they yelled as they rushed the large fishman before punching the man in the side. You, they then punched the man in the air. Zu, they appeared up in the air with him and slammed him to the side. Ma, they did it again. Ki, they punched the man higher in the air. Naruto high velocity crush, he yelled as he and the clones slammed their feet on the guy, sending him to the ground in a large crater, kicking up a lot of dust. All the fishmen and the people of the island stared in shock at what they just witnessed. They weren't sure how it was possible but Naruto just created clones of himself and kicked Oolong's ass, or so they thought. They began to hear maniacal laughter. Finally, someone worth fighting. When the dust cleared, they saw the large fishman standing like nothing had happened with Naruto not too far away. However, they noticed the suit was all ripped up now. I am glad I decided to fight you boy. Show me the power of your devil fruit more. Ah, I didn't eat one. These are ninja powers, Naruto replied. Seriously, a normal human, what fun. Oolong shouted and he lifted his hands and the water behind him rose. My power is to control water. Ha, rapid white caps, he shouted as the water split off to create huge bullet-like objects that flew at high speed at the blonde. Naruto's eyes widened as he twisted around the large bullets of water, but he saw one that he could not dodge, so he made his large sword appear and sliced it down the middle. That was like jutsu, two can play at that. Ice style. Twin black dragon blizzard. The blonde shouted as two huge black dragons rushed towards a shocked Oolong and then that flung him high in the air. I am so glad I can combine elements, otherwise I would not be able to do that jutsu that that ass from Snow Country did on me. Wind style. Tornado drill. A massive tornado came down on the blonde until it wrapped around his fist and spun fast into a drill-like attack. Using the wind element, he jumped high in the air and slammed the attack against the giant man's chest ripping up the suit and actually making the man bleed. He crashed down on the ground while Naruto landed gracefully. When Oolong got back up, the top half of his suit was gone and he was bleed slightly. You made me bleed, now I am mad, 
He raised the water again and yelled, White Rapids. The water shot all around hitting anything that it came into contact with. It even flooded the place and he smirked. Now he had the advantage. However, he was once again shocked, like everyone else, that the blonde was walking on the water and not in it. What the hell are you? I told you, I am a ninja, Naruto said calmly with a smile and performed a few hand signs. I only know part of this jutsu from watching Sasuke. But it doesn't matter because it has Naruto flair to it. Lightning style. Chidori EMP. He pushed a large amount of chakra into this and a few pulses of pure lightning poured into the water, giving Oolong the shock of his life. He barely registered that everything around him was the sound of thousands of birds chirping. Hey, fried fish anyone? Naruto joked. Oh. Growled Oolong. You think you are so funny. Well I am going to kill you. He screamed in his shark-like rage. The look on the enraged fisherman's face was a little off-putting for Naruto. His eyes widened when the man disappeared from view and before he knew it, he was sent into the wall. Oh shit, enraged fishman equals stronger fishman. Wrenching himself out of the wall, he noticed that his sword was near the middle of the park, stuck in the ground. The force for punch must have knocked it out of his hand. However, before he could go to it, was blindsided and sent across the park, but he did not crash into the wall. No, he was knocked around the park, much like what Lee did to Gara. Luckily for him, he put a seal on his clothes to have them repair themselves when they got damaged, but his body was a different story. That got thrashed. Soon, he felt himself being held in the air. Well boy, you may have thought you could win, but like I said to you before. No one can beat me. He shouted before punching the boy in the gut one more time, making the blonde cough out blood. He then felt a hand around his neck as he was forced to look out of the gates, to everyone watching, counting on him to win. He saw all their faces. Some looked shocked at the show of power between the two, while Genzo looked on sadly at Naruto's beaten form, with blood running down half his face. It was Nojiko's face that really hurt him. She was crying, he really hated to see her cry. Oolong seemed to pick up on this and smirked. Yes, you will die, but they will join you soon. That blue-haired girl will be the first of them to join you. Hey, you don't have the power to protect them. Ha ha ha. Upon hearing this, Naruto's blood ran cold and he felt himself drawing on Kayubi's energy and his wounds healing as a golden aura appeared around him. I won't let you touch them. He growled out as he twisted a bit in the fishman's grip and held out his hand to form a golden sphere of chakra. Rasengan, he slammed the swirling ball on energy into the man's chest, sending Oolong spiraling towards his crew. With the golden aura swirling around the blonde, he made his way to his sword embedded in the ground and stood next to it. Oolong and his crew looked wide-eyed at the blonde before the captain hacked up a few globs of blood and looked at the large spiral pattern on his chest as it bleed profusely. He growled weakly as he got back up. I am going to enjoy killing you and your friends. Yep. Another mistake, another bad thing to say to Naruto as his eyes grew slits and his aura grew as the image of a giant nine-tailed golden fox appeared above him. True fear gripped at the fishman pirates while all the villager were awestruck. Oh my god, Oolong freaked, the legendary Kayubi, a part of the guardian of the sea. Just who the hell are you? He screamed before trying to move and get away from this kid, but was immobilized by a large golden chakra hand that came out of nowhere. Naruto created two clones to help him with his last jutsu, because he knew this would drain a good amount of chakra. He looked to the entrapped man with a piercing gaze that was scaring the crap out of Oolong and the rest of his crew. I guess I gotta say it again, but I guess I'll say my whole name. My name is Uzumaki D. Naruto. What? Oolong yelled in fright as the Naruto clones created a large sphere over the original with his hand up in the air. It then began to scream loudly as the wind whipped around it as oddly curved blades formed around it. This might be overkill but oh well. Eat this. Wind style. Resenshuriken. As his shadow clones disappeared, he threw the attack at the man and his crew, who had the deer in the headlights, look. The villagers witnessed a giant ball of swirling energy form around the crew when the attack hit and all that was heard was the screams of pain and the tiny wind blades slicing them up. When it cleared, all that was left of the fishman crew was bloody corpses. Naruto smiled weakly as the villagers recovered from their shock and rushed up to the blonde to see if he was okay. 
Nojiko was the first to find her voice. Naruto, that was so amazing. Thanks. Naruto smiled. It was all worth it to keep you all alive. Now, if you don't mind, I am going to pass out now. He did so right after that. Lucky, Genzo caught him. Geez, this kid is something else, especially if he had the Kyubi with him. Yeah, something else all right. Nojiko said with a smile as she looked at the blonde fondly. She looked at the villagers and said, Someone bring that sword, we need to get Naruto out of here. A few people did so without problems, but once they got it out of the ground, the blue-haired woman could not help but laugh when they began to complain how heavy it was. XXX. A few days later, on the grand line, Nami had just gotten the paper again and sat down to read. Like usual, a wanted poster fell out and she assumed it was one of them. So picking it up, she was shocked to find it was none of them and the fact that the guy looked younger than them. Holy crap, summed it all up. That brought the rest of the crew over to see what was up. They eyed the poster in shock as Nami read the headline in the paper. The notorious pirate Oolong and his crew, also the father of Sawtooth Alrong, attacked the small village of Kokoyashi. He threatened to destroy the place since Straw Hat Luffy was not there. A young boy challenged him and won in a stunning display of power, but not before shouting out his name, which is Uzumaki D. Naruto. Since he beat Oolong, who had a 70 million belly bounty, Uzumaki D. Naruto aka Demon Eyes Naruto, now has a 90 million belly bounty. He is said to be able to control wind, ice, lightning, clones, and pure energy. They could not believe that a kid could have such a high bounty on his head for defending a small village from a notorious pirate. Zoro looked at boy pictures, the one on the newspaper, which had a full body picture of the kid in front of a large sword, blood on his face, and him holding up a large ball of energy with four curved blades on it, and then poster with a close up of his face that showed that his eyes were slitted. TCH, guess if you don't proclaim yourself a bounty hunter or are not part of the marines that makes you a pirate when you kill a pirate still nice sword kid good luck you're going to need it oolong sounds like someone got lazy and stole a name from another anime luffy mused out loud getting odd looks from his crew what is there something on my face nami shook her head with a smile nothing luffy she looked back to the paper and smiled at the blonde Thank you, Naruto, for keeping them safe. The next day, Naruto is seen on the decks, looking out onto the blue. He found out he had put in way too much chakra in his last attack. Still he was glad he beat that guy, no one messed with his friends, ever. After that, Kayubi had informed him that thanks to using his chakra after Naruto's own was drained, the blonde's chakra reserve tripled and it will happen each time that happens. After all, Naruto was going to the Guardian of the Sea and would need an ungodly amount of chakra to pull it off. Najiko smiled as she and Genzo walked up to the boy. So, today is the day, huh? Yep. Naruto replied sadly until he looked at the woman to see that she had a backpack on. Going somewhere? Nojiko smiled as Genzo slapped his face. I am leaving with you. Someone has to take care of you out on sea, or do you want to travel by yourself? Naruto's face cracked into a true smile. Yeah, I would like that, but what about those awesome oranges of yours? They are tangerines and the villagers will take care of them, Nojiko said, and there is another reason I am going with you. I think we will run into my sister out there, Nami. She is the girl who is with the Straw Hat crew, right? A nod. Welp. Sounds good to me. Genzo smiled. These two made quite the pair and he was sure that this brother and sister relationship they had would be something more in the future, no matter the age difference. He then blinked and asked, So, where is your ship? Oh that, Naruto said sheepishly as he rubbed the back of his head. I kind of forgot that I built it in the middle of the ship graveyard. So, my clones are talking care of that. The two looked at him with deadpan expressions before Genzo slapped his face again. Of course, he should not be surprised with this kid. So that is what those explosions were about. Hey, yep, Naruto cheered as his ship came up to the pier with his clone shouting that they had arrived before dispelling. He blinked and said, wow, they really did a number on that place to get out. Wow, it is big and looks like it could go fast, Najiko said in wonder, but was confused about the toad head on the front. 
Biting back a, that's what she said, joke, he turned to Genzo and smiled, thanks again old man. Genzo smirked before pulling in the blonde with an arm around him. I am going to tell you the same thing I told that straw hat kid. Don't hurt her or I will kill you. Naruto blinked in confusion. I am not going to hurt her, why would I do that? Genzo laughed. This kid was good, but stupid like Luffy, you'll know in time. Okay. Naruto shrugged before he grabbed hold of Najiko's arm. Come on, adventure is waiting and so is the last of my family. Wah. Holy crap. Najiko started and then screamed because they jumped high into the air and landed on the ship. She rounded on the blonde and shouted, warn me next time. Okay. Naruto cheered as he created a small crew of shadow clone to get the boat going. Hey, Naruto, any clue where we are going? Najiko asked as she walked around. Nope, but I guess I will tour the East Blue for a bit before we head into the Grand Line. Sighing as she held the bridge of her nose, okay fine, but I will be your navigator so we don't get lost. Thanks, Naruto smiled. Man, if you weren't here, I would be lost. He paused before snapping his fingers. Oh right, they wanted me to summon them when we left. Summoning Jutsu. The blonde called out as two small toads appeared. Kichi, Tatsu. We are on our way. Yay. Now we can have fun, Najiko shook her head. Naruto was very hard to figure out and it was giving her a headache. As she was going to downstairs she heard the toads cheer loudly. Candy. Candy. What, I don't have candy on me right now, just normal food. What is with you two and candy? Najiko groaned to herself. Oh this is going to be a long journey. XXX. Naruto. Why did we pass that large restaurant that was literally floating on the water? Asked Gamakichi. E.H. We can go to that place on the way back to the Grand Line. Besides, I am sure we are not missing anything important, Naruto replied. On one of the docks of the floating restaurant, a young girl with strange rectangle purple markings on her face and a leaf headband, stood there. She was about 15 and looked completely lost. Just where am I and how am I even alive? She asked no one in particular while holding an odd fruit. Sighing, she decided to go into the restaurant to get information. XXX. So bored. Wind aboard Naruto as he draped himself over the edge of the ship, looking like his failed normal clones. Najiko's eyebrow twitched, this was the tenth time he said that today, and it was barely lunchtime. Why don't you train? She asked sweetly from her position on a lawn chair. Not picking up on the danger of that tone, Naruto replied with a comeback. Well, I could increase the weight on these gravity seals on my body, but the jutsu I use are too destructive to use on this thing. Okay. What about those toads or that weird chakra hand power of yours? Asked Najiko. Naruto laughed nervously. Well, other than Kichi and Tatsu, most of the other toads are big and heavy. You obviously don't like it when the three of us argue by the way you shot at us. Well, you guys would not stop arguing and Kichi was very rude, Najiko said annoyed. Naruto scratched the back of his head sheepishly, then I doubt you would want to meet Ma and Pa Toad. They argue a lot and they're old and senile. At this, Najiko could not help but laugh. Oh man, you have some of the weirdest friends. She paused for a moment. Wait, I am your friend so that makes me weird too. Yep. Chirped Naruto. You weren't supposed to agree, Najiko cried before she calmed down. Now what about that chakra hands? Blue hands made of chakra rose up from the ground and tickled Najiko's sides, making the girl helpless as she couldn't help but laugh. E.H. I can use these in my taijutsu and again, it can get destructive, but simple things like this is fun, laughed Naruto before he turned his head and saw an island coming up and let his chakra hands disappear. Once Najiko recovered, she didn't know whether to bash his head in or be glad that an island was up. She would admit that what he did was fun and a good time killer but it was still embarrassing since she was still ticklish. She was just glad the idiot it was not a pervert. Shaking her head and checking the map, she said, seems this is place is called Gecko Island, home of Syrup Village. Cool. Let's check it out, cheered Naruto as the ship stopped at the bottom of a hill that looked like it was the site of a battle at one point. They hopped down and began walking toward the village. Well that was until they went deeper into the forest and wooden puppets with flags popped out. Surrender pirates. Sounds a child's voice. There are two of you and three thousand thousand of us, 
you will not harm out village. Naruto blinked stupidly before he gained a twitching eye. He crossed his arms and said, Wow you're a worse liar than Kakashi Sensei. I can sense the chakra of only three of you, but if you want to fight, then let's get wild, shadow clone jutsu. That jutsu filled up the path behind him and Najiko, the latter of the two sighing before taking out a gun. Silence was what they met before three little kids burst out of the bushes and threw themselves on the ground, we surrender. They looked up to see that Naruto was glaring at them menacingly for about a minute, making them sweat under his gaze. Okay. Naruto chirped with a big smile, utterly confusing the kids with his sudden mood change as all the clones disappeared. Huh. You are not going to hurt us and then raid the village? A boy with green hair, a green shirt with a silly looking skull and crossbones on it, blue shorts with a lighter blue sash and black shoes asked. The two observed the other two kids that wanted to protect their village, one was a glasses wearing kid with a yellow shirt, a blue vest and brown shorts while the other had purple hair that covered his eyes, a black hoodie, and orange shorts. They were an odd group all right. Najiko smiled and kneeled down and asked, what makes you think we were going to hurt you? Well, the purple haired kid began, we saw your odd ship and thought you were pirates that were going to raid out village. Ah don't worry. We might be considered pirates but we just stopped here to check the place out. I was bored and wanted to see that place. Naruto said, by the way. My name is Uzumaki D. Naruto and don't ask what the D stands for because I have no clue. So, what are your names? This guy is kind of like that Luffy guy. The boys thought before getting into an odd formation. Carrot. The purple haired boy stated. Onion. The glasses wearing boy said. Pepper announced the purple hair boy. And we are the Usopp pirates, they cheered. Cool, Naruto smiled. These little kids reminded him of the Konohamaru and his gang. He would have said more if his stomach did not just rumble loudly. Scratching the back of his head, he asked, you guys would not happen to have a restaurant here, would you? Najiko couldn't help but laugh at her blonde shipmate, but her stomach growled as well. I second that I guess. Laughing, the kids lead the way into town. XXX in the mansion of the small village, Mary. A strange looking man with curly white hair with curled goat horns in it and a black suit, walked into the room of his employer. Oh Miss Kaya. How are you today? I am great Mary. Said the carefree girl. She smiled at her butler and asked. Any new news on Usopp and his friends? I am afraid not. Mary smiled sadly before it grew. Oh I got word from one of the kids that hung around with him that there are two pirates on the island and they seem to be like Luffy's crew. Oh, let's go meet them, the happy girl suggested before running off, laughing. Of course miss, laughed Mary. XXX, oh this food is so good, stated Naruto as he crowed down. I agree, but do we have enough money for this? Najiko asked. Oh yeah, I got plenty of money, Naruto said, waving her off. I went to this exchange place back in Kokoyashi and exchanged all the money my parents left me. Apparently, the money from back home is in the system and now I am rich, so, I got plenty of money. Najiko smiled. Good, and as soon as we get to a larger island, we are going shopping. Shrugging, Naruto replied, fine with me, poor idiot did not know what he was in for. Suddenly the door to the diner they were in burst open and in came a young girl. Najiko noticed that she had long blonde hair, with a yellow striped shirt over an orangish dress and red boots. The girl looked directly at them since she knew they were not from around there. Hello? Are you two pirates? Sweat dropping, Najiko answered since Naruto's face was stuffed with food. I wouldn't call us that, but the marines would. I am Najiko and the lughead stuffing his face over there is Naruto. Nice to meet you, I am Kaya. I live in the mansion on the hill. Nice, but you don't seem like a rich girl, Naruto said. I mean, you are not stuck up like most of the rich people I have met. He paused as he put a hand to his chin. Of course, Princess Koyuki was the exception. That got a questioning glance from Najiko. Well, I guess I am like that princess, Kaya said happily. Cool with me. Smile Naruto. You are so easy to please Naruto, Najiko said with a smile. Hey, I am a simple person. Naruto said with a shrug. I figured that. Najiko thought with a smile. Hey Kaya. Onion chirped in. You should see this guy's ship. 
Yeah, it looks like he put it together using different ships, Pepper said. Yeah and the giant toad head is a bit weird. Carrot put his input. Oh it is not that bad, Najiko said, waving off the comments as she sweat dropped at her blonde captain, who was in the corner of the room, with his hand on the wall and his head down in a storm cloud over him while he kept muttering about doing his best. I am sure it is wonderful and I am sure Mary would not mind help in fixing it up, Kaya replied. Really? Naruto said, in front of the girl with stars in his eyes, scaring Najiko a bit with his sudden mode change. You would do that for us, I mean you barely know us. Oh I don't mind. Something tells me you are like Luffy and his crew, Kaya said with a smile. You know Luffy and his friends? asked a shocked Najiko. Yes, they saved my life from my other butler, Caption Kuro, who wanted to kill me and keep all my money. Wow, Najiko said. Uh, was an orange-haired girl with them at the time? Yes. Nami I think her name was. Great, I am her sister, the blue hair woman stated. That is wonderful. Kaya cheered. So I assume you were hoping to run into her? Getting a nod, she continued. That is great and if you do meet up, say hi to Usopp for me. Sure thing. Smiled Naruto. But if you are going to be helping us with our ship, we have to repay you somehow, so sit and eat with us, my treat. Are you sure? Kaya asked, of course. Trust me, Naruto won't take no for an answer, Najiko said with chuckle. Yeah, let's make it a party, Naruto announced, getting cheers from the three kids and an enthusiastic, yes, from Mary. XXX two days later, we find the group on the hill where they docked their boat. Mary must have had help because the ship looked better than the beat up patchwork ship that Naruto created. Mary had smoothed out the sides where Naruto had patched together parts of the ship. It was then painted red like Gamakichi with the edges a yellow color like Gamatatsu. The toad head was more refined and it had half of Kichi's face and the other half was Tatsu's. On the large mast was a picture of their new Jolly Roger. A large skull with the Konoha symbol embedded into the forehead, with the crossbones made out of clouds and lightning coming out and striking the mouth of the skull. Their flag was about the same. From what you told me of your battle with the pirate named Oolong and a bit of your past, I was able to come up with a good Jolly Roger for you. I have a feeling people will be calling your crew the Storm Pirates, Mary said with a smile. Naruto put on a true smile. Thanks Mary, I really appreciate you and Kaya helping us. Oh it is no problem Mr. Uzumaki, Mary said, though he wondered why Naruto acted like this. The boy was overly grateful and too nice. He did ask Najiko about the boy but she said he didn't say much about his past other than being the container to the fabled Kyubi. Wow, this looks why better than before. Smirked Najiko before turning to see that Naruto had a gloom cloud over his head. Oh but you did a good job with what little skill you had in making ships, Naruto. The blonde's mood shifted again as he smiled brightly at the girl. Thanks Najiko-chan. Well we better go but I think Kichi and Tatsu should see this. Summon Jutsu. The two toads appeared in front of the blonde, waving in good nature. I will never get used to something like that, Mary said. Well, I think they are cute, Kaya said, coming up behind the butler. Ah thanks pretty lady, Tatsu said, do you have any candy? Kaya smiled sweetly before she produced a small bag of candy, now share you too. Well that was nice, Najiko said. Yep, replied Naruto. Hey you too. The reason I summoned you too was to see the new state of the ship. The two toads leaned in and looked past the blonde to see how different the ship had become. Wow boss, it looks awesome, Kichi said with a smile. Yep, Naruto said as he then turned to Kaya and Mary, you know, you are welcome come join us. Kaya gained a shocked look before she smiled and said, I am sorry, but my place is here and the kids have their own dreams. Naruto laughed, well, it was worth the try. He turned to Najiko and asked, are you ready to go? Yep, so where are we heading now? Well, since we came out this far, we might as well head to the Grand Line. I figured my family would not be out here, but there. And I want to check out that floating restaurant. Laughing, Najiko shook her head. Well I should have expected that. She jumped high into the boat with Naruto smiling broadly at her with a small blush. I am glad I taught her how to jump to the boat without me helping her. Naruto replied before he caught himself looking at her ass and some of her panties. No, bad Naruto. 
Bad. Turning back to Kaya and Mary, he smiled and said, again, thanks for everything. Oh it is no problem, Kaya said, waving him off before he did a backflip jump onto ship. Just remember to say hi to Usopp for me. Will do, Naruto shouted as the ship pulled away. XXX Naruto sighed as he manned the wheel of the ship. How did I get stuck doing this? He asked himself. Oh that's right. Najiko was feeling tired, so she told him to keep the boat in a straight line until they got to the restaurant. That had been a few hours ago, and he had finally noticed that his ship was now faster than before now that it was more aerodynamic. Anyway, the pure boredom of watching Endless Sea was getting to him and he felt his eyes drooping until they closed. But that was just for a few seconds because suddenly, they made a crash stop. Blinking in confusion, the blonde walked to the front of the ship to see an oddly shaped island in front of him. Okay, that was not there before. Uh, what is going on now? Najiko asked from the back of the ship, where she came out from below. I swear, I leave you alone for a few hours and this happens, she said when she noticed the island. Sweating under her gaze, Naruto made up an excuse, which was in fact true. Um, this place just appeared out of nowhere. I didn't have time to stop correctly or move around it. Najiko eyed him for a few seconds before sighing and turning around to get her maps from inside the ship. Holy crap! She shouted a few minutes later, making Naruto rush to her to see what was wrong, but it seemed she was heading to him and they crashed. Ow, Naruto said as he held his head and picked himself off the floor. Helping his blue haired crewmate up, he asked, So what was that about? We are on Bad Island, she shouted. So, Naruto said, not understanding the problem. This is an island that only appears every few centuries and the world government has it out for this place, Najiko frantically said. Okay, why? Naruto said as he jumped onto the island, making the girl jump after him. Well, apparently, there's someone that is really old on this island that can tell people about the past and the fabled void century and they don't want that. Huh? Well that is stupid. Naruto commented, must be something sketchy. Naruto mused. Right, so they come here every time this place appears and they try and get rid of that person. Now we need to get off this island. Najiko cried, trying to get her captain back on the ship. It is a bit late for that. A voice said from on the far end of the small bat shaped island. They saw a person on a small old looking house. She had platinum blonde hair, blue eyes, a strange looking yellow police uniform that they had never seen before that was short sleeved, and it looked like it barely held in her s. Though, the sleeves were different as one was grey and the other was red. The uniform ended in at her thighs in a skirt like way. She had white gloves on her hands and thigh high whitish boots to top off the weird looking rifle that was way taller than her and she was holding it up like it was nothing. The marines are coming here, pirates, so you better choose a side, the girl said. That is when they saw the marine ships on the horizon and there could be at least 50 or more of them. Najiko screamed in horror while Naruto blinked at them in confusion before his eyes grew dangerous. It was not her fault that this woman has lived for so long, so these guys should just leave her alone. She is not doing anything to them, fine. I am on your side miss. I am Naruto D. Uzumaki by the way. The girl on the roof had wide eyes at the mention of the D. Intital but shook it off. Obviously this kid did not know the meaning of it and it seemed he seemed to sympathize with her on some level. Victoria Saras. Are you ready to kick some ass Naruto? Hell yeah. Naruto cheered. Oh you two are nuts. Najiko cried. Relax Najiko-chan. I wouldn't let anything happen to you and besides. You have water jutsu on your side. Naruto promised. The blue haired woman seemed to calm down just a little bit, but was still nervous. Sarah saw this and figured that the boy must have a calming affect about him because she had calmed down a bit as well. She cut her eyes to the ships that were coming their way. Let's do this. So, what is the plan? Najiko asked. When they get near, they will start attacking like usual. It is the same plan for them every time. So we just go all out and blast them away, Sarah said. Marines are not that smart, are they? Naruto asked with a dead panned expression. Nope. Sarah stated. What if we have to take the fight to them? Najiko asked as the ships got closer. Then, that what we will do, Sarah stated as she stared at the coming ships. Yeah, don't worry Najiko-chan. I'll carry you on my back while I waterwalk if it comes to that. Naruto offered, 
getting an odd look from Sarah's. You should have taught that to me as well, shouted the blue-haired woman. Naruto rubbed the back of his head nervously. I didn't think to do that yet, he said, making both women face vault. Besides, I have to teach you how to tree climb with just your feet first. Oh great. Najiko sighed. Sarah's, however, was wondering what the hell the boy was talking about. Girl who has lived on this island for countless years. A voice rung out from one of the marine ships. According to the world government, you have lived too long and are a danger to the world government. We are to put you down. Naruto now had a pissed off look on his face. He sucked in a lot of air and shouted out his response before Sarah's could retort. Just who the hell you think you are to decide to fade someone? He paused, not seeing the shocked look on Sarah's face. He, he barely even knows me and he already said he would join me in fighting these guys and now he is defending me. Just who are you Naruto? Sarah's thought. Well, no answer, no matter, I am Uzumaki D Naruto and I am going to help her, Naruto shouted again. The Commodore of that fleet had a shocked face, before he smiled. Well then boy, I am Commodore Johnson and once I am done with her, I am taking you in, demonized Naruto. You will try. Naruto said evenly, as the Commodore gave the order to attack, soon cannon balls began to rain down on them. HMPH, what pathetic weapons. Sarah's said as she pointed her rather large rifle-like gun at one of the ships. Here is a taste of true firepower from my Harkonnen, she yelled at the yelled and pulled the trigger. Naruto saw a huge bullet fly out of the now named Harkonnen and hit one of the ships, making it explode from the pact. The blonde ninja whistled. Nice, he cheered. My turn. This jutsu I got from my dad, who must have stolen it from the third rakage. Lightning style. Black lightning. The sky begun to darken, making most of the marines wonder why there was going to rain when it was a perfect day before. Well, that was before and this is now because three huge black bolts of lightning struck down and destroyed three of the ships and kicked up the water, creating a few small waves that buffeted the ships. Whoa! Najiko said in wonder, I didn't know you could do that. That's because you didn't ask. Naruto replied simply while Sarah stared at the blonde in shock. No one she had ever known could do that. She then smirked and said, Let's do this, you got it, Naruto smirked back as cannonballs rained down on them forcing Naruto to take Najiko on his back and run on the water. Najiko, get ready to fire those guns like no tomorrow. Uh, right. The blue-haired woman shouted as Naruto ran at high speeds and with her shooting at the various marines, they were quite a team. Sarah's watched them from atop her small house with a smirk. Oh this is going to be good, she said as she shot off a few more shots that blew up a few more ships. Her eyes widened however as a few cannonballs crashed into her house, totally obliterating it. That is when her eyes turned red and slitted like a vampire's. My Harknonen too was in there you fools, she discarded her gun as her left arm took on the form of black flowing energy. Prepare to die, she screamed as the black energy form wicked looking wings and she flew off to the boats to begin her slaughter. Naruto saw this out of the corner of his eyes and sweated. Oh man, remind me to new get on her bad side. He said as he performed a set of familiar hand signs. But I can't let her outdo me, summoning Jutsu. Out of the large cloud of smoke, a large red toad stepped out. Holy shit! That is one huge ass frog. A random marine shouted as most of his friend cowered at the sight of it, thinking that he was a sea king. Gamabunta is not a frog, you idiot. He is a toad. Say it with me, toad. An enraged Naruto shouted. He then calmed down and looked at the giant toad. I am sorry I summoned you on salt water boss toad, but I need your help in this fight. I thought as much when I saw the massive fleet of boats in front of me. Bunta deadpanned. Still, we need to have that drink, so you better pay up boy. Najiko stared at shock at the giant toad she and Naruto was currently on. S such a huge toad that talks, she said quietly. Smirking, Naruto replied, oh you have not seen anything yet, Boss Toad, let's give them hell. Aye aye. The giant toad replied with a laugh, water style. Gunshot. A giant ball of water shot out of the toad's mouth at such high speeds that it cut through a line of ships like a hot knife through butter. A cannonball was then fired at them in hopes of destroying them. However, the toad caught it like it was nothing. Naruto had a thoughtful look on his face before he smirked and said, 
Okay boss Toad, let's use that in a massive fire attack. Fine with me. Toad oil bullet. Fire style. Flame bullet. Naruto shouted before they both shouted, fire style toad oil flame bullet. They both spat out their respective attacks, which combined as it took out a good section of the ships. Najiko's jaw was on the floor, or Gamabunta's head. This is totaling insane. I can't do that. I only have the water jutsu that he taught me. Oh ho ho. Nice blondie. Sarah's thought as she ripped up marine after marine on the current ship she was on, before jumping to the next with a maniacal look in her eye. Okay. Gamabunta, take care of Najiko, while I handle the idiots on the far side. Water style. Rising water pillars. He ordered before running off and getting higher in the air. What, are you crazy? Najiko cried out. Don't worry, since we are in nothing but water, your jutsu are stronger than usual and you won't waste too much chakra, you'll be fine. Naruto shouted as he dodged cannonballs while doing hand signs and all with a smile. The blue haired blinked at that and smiled at the bit of information. Usually, it was pretty hard to do water jutsu on dry land, but Naruto was right, she had water all around. Smirking as she gained her confidence, she stepped up between the toad's eyes and said, Well, Mr. Bunta, looks like we have our work cut out for us. The giant toad grunted, so it seems, he said as he took out his giant tonto to slice a ship that got to close. Water style. Ripping water wave. Najiko called out happily that it was so easy to do. A large wave of water rose up in front of them before it shot off and destroyed a section of ships. Her eyes widened at what she did and she smiled brightly. Cool, water style. A thousand feed sharks. For a few minutes, nothing happened. One marine stupidly looked over the ship and got his head chomped off, freaking out the rest of the men on the ships. They didn't have time to react it as theirs and a few other ships were overtaken by sharks made out of water. XXX the Commodore of the fleet looked on in horror as his fleet was torn to shreds. He was growing more and more enraged as each ship fell. I will not have this, Captain. Yes sir? A man said from next to Johnson. Prepare the main cannon. That stupid animal of his is about to die. Johnson ordered with intense eyes. Why yes sir, the Captain said before running off to give the orders. A few seconds later, a large three-barreled cannon was revealed as part of the deck slid away. Commodore Johnson smirked in triumph, fire. A crack of air was the only warning they got as three two-story house-sized cannonballs zoomed off to end the giant toad's life, along with the girl on him. Oh not good. Najiko screamed. Water style. Great water wall. A thick layer of water shot up to protect them. I don't know how much good that will do, so hold on tight girl. Bunta shouted as he geared up to jump high up. With a push of his giant legs, they shot up like a rocket, with Najiko screamed bloody murder the whole way up. The cannonballs hit the water wall dead on and shattered it like it was nothing. Uck! growled Commodore Johnson. Keep firing at that thing. Yes sir. His crew shouted in unison. XXX Naruto finished his set of hand signs from high up and decided to ask the marines a stupid question. Hey! What do you get when you combine water and lightning? Down below, they looked at each other stupidly and Naruto, even at the height he was at, could see their confusion. Give up? Well you get a storm? Storm style. Laser circus. A large halo of lightning formed above the blonde before multiple shots of lightning rained down on the poor marines, completely obliterating them. While he was still up in the air, he noticed that Sarah's was almost done on her side of the fleet and so, not to be shown up by the enraged girl, used a wind jutsu to move over to be above the last of the ships on his ship. He looked to Najiko on a jumping Gamabunta and chuckled. Hey, I think I was like that too when he first begun to do that to me. He paused before another idea came to him. Boss Toad. Najiko. Send over a tearing torrent. Are you nuts? We're kind of busy here. The blue haired woman screamed with tears in her eyes as they landed. Just trust me, we can get this over with quicker. Fine. Najiko yelled. Well, Mr. Bunta, guess we don't have a choice. Figures. This kid is nuts, that much I have already figured out when we had to fight Shukaku. Well, together then. Najiko nodded before they both called out, water style, tearing torrent. Smirking as the water shot towards him. He created a clone T that helped him create his next jutsu. Kei's Cho Odama Rasengan. As the giant wind Rasengan was fully formed, 
the large amount of water hit it and the wind drove it all in to combine into his next attack and he pointed it down and fell, laughing the whole way down. As soon as he hit a ship, he yelled, Typhoon Vortex Jutsu. The force of the attack sent out a spiral of elements and energy that had destroyed all the ships on his side, but he didn't account for what it did to the water because the spiraling created a massive maelstrom that seemed to get bigger every minute. He landed on the water and begun to run against the current. He yelled out with a freaked out expression, Ah oh man, I did not expect this. Then you should not have done that, shouted Najiko from atop Gamabunta head, who was sweat dropping at the scene of Naruto inside a giant maelstrom and trying to run out of it. Well exudes me princess, Naruto cried with anime tears, but a gunshot that gazed his cheek and that got his attention on the Commodore's ship just in time to see that three-barreled cannon directed him. As soon as it was fired, the blonde growled at the cowardice of that man running that ship. Shoot at me will you? Wine style. Sonic shot. The wind surrounded him violently before he shot of like a rocket and managed to fly through the hole between the three large cannonballs. He managed to use the wind to hover over the large ship of the Commodore and raised his hands into the air. Crap. Kyubi, I need your chakra. I put in too much again with all these attacks. Very well, Kit, but you really need to learn more chakra control. Yeah, I'll get right on that, thought Naruto as he was flooded with the fox's chakra and his eyes took on that slitted look. This should take out those annoying cannons, 10,000 fists, God's fist. He created 10,000 fists of Kyubi's golden chakra that then combined into one giant one that crashed into the large ship and took off the very front of the ship. Now, to get rid of the fool who started this attack, he said as he landed on the ship the same time that Sarah's did. He looked in front of them and there were at least more than a hundred marines ready to battle that. TCH, small fry, he said before they attacked. XXX Gamabunta sighed as he jumped over to Bat Island. It would seem the rest of the fight is theirs now. Uh, I am tired, but I will watch will you girl. Najiko smiled and said, thanks Mr. Bunta, but you know, this was mostly their fight to begin with. Ha. Huh. Ha 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 ha. That could be true girl. I can see that you are the smarter of the two. Gamabunta laughed, before Najiko laughed as well, agreeing with him. XXX as Naruto was cutting down the marines with just taijutsu, he noticed that Sarah's looked tired, but her berserker state was not letting her rest. He could not blame the girl for being tired, she had to cut them all down, boat by boat while he used overpowered jutsu that drained him of his normal chakra. Kayubi saw this and sighed, Kit, since most of these goons are gone, she will need to rest. You need to get to her and put your palm to her forehead. I will do the rest. Right. Thought Naruto as he rushed up to the girl, but since she was still in her berserker mode, she could not distinguish between friend or foe, so she tried to attack with that black energy that her left arm turned. He easily dodged with Kayubi's energy flowing through him and he managed to get his hand on the girl's head and everything went white. XXX Naruto blinked as all he saw around him was white and the large form of the Kayubi staring down at Sarah's who had a blank look on her face for a few seconds before she looked around, staring at her fellow blonde and then turning to Kayubi. Gasping, she kneeled and said, Lord Kayubi, where are we and how did we get here? The fox smiled down at the girl and said, Sarah's Victoria, you should know that you don't have to bow to me. We fought together a few times against these fools, so please, stand up. Seeing her do so hesitantly, he continued. Now to answer your questions. We are in your mind at the moment and my heir brought us here. Sarah's eyes widened as she turned her head to Naruto at that bit of information. So the boy I met is actually your heir? What happened? Kayubi sighed, I went to another world and it tainted me. Fortunately, this boy's mother is from this world and so he was able to come here and that removed the taint from me, but the other parts of me are stuck in that evil world. Once this boy gets to the Isle of the Sea God, he will become the next guardian of the sea for I am sealed within him. The girl looked sadly at the fox, I am sorry to hear that. E.H., I have lived a long time, Kayubi said with a shrug. Now, leave the rest of this fight to my heir, your body has taken much abuse in this fight, so please rest. Sarah's grimaced, I went berserker again, didn't I? The Kayubi nodded, yes and for a true vampire, that is not a good thing so rest my friend. Sarah's nodded as they faded from her mind. XXX the two blinked for a second, until Sarah's noticed that Naruto's hand was still on her forehead. For some reason, they both blushed at their position, 
so she took his hand off, but before she could say anything, Naruto's ninja senses kicked in as he ed his head back as what looked like sharpened rubies flew past him. I don't know what you did, demon eyes, calm her down, the Commodore said before he smirked. Though, I have to say that I am honored to see those eyes up close, but I have to say that her red eyes were more menacing a few seconds ago. Naruto darted his eyes to the man and finally noticed his appearance. Johnson was in the normal high-ranking uniform, but his long coat was on his shoulders like that of higher-ranking marines. He had an eye patch over his right eye and he had red hair that was set back to make him look menacing. So, you're Commodore Johnson. Yes, that would be me. The man said with a smirk. I can't believe my luck. I get to take in two enemies of the world government. Says you. Naruto said dangerously. Saras, please stay out of this. Right. The girl said while holding her left arm. I am kind of weak at the moment anyway. Nodding, Naruto turned back to Johnson. Well, let's see what you got. However, before they could start, they felt the ship being pulled into the maelstrom. Well, this makes thing interesting. I suppose it does. I guess our battle is under a time limit. No matter, no one has ever beaten me when I use the power of the jewel jewel fruit. Hey, looks like it'll be the first, Tisk, why brat? Jewel jewel ruby shooter. Johnson called out as he held out his hand to shoot out a continuous barrage of sharpened rubies at the blonde. Naruto growled as he was kept on the defensive as he dodged the rubies that wouldn't stop. Naruto, this is an opponent that in your current state, you can't beat. I am giving you more power. Right, one tail. Naruto shouted as he was covered in a golden fox like cloak. Smirking, he said, Now I can use my hand power freely. That is an interesting form, boy. But it won't save you. Johnson shouted. Jewel jewel armor, jewel jewel sword and shield. Johnson's body was covered in diamonds and a ruby sword was formed while a sapphire shield was formed. You see now, boy. My armor is made of diamond. No one can beat me in this form. TCH. We'll see about that, you old man, Naruto growled out as he rushed the man to engage him in close combat, but that was futile because when he punched the diamond armor, he just hurt his hands. So he kicked the ruby sword out of the man's hand, making it shatter against the wall before he kicked the shield in half. Backflipping back to his original position, he grimaced. Those jewels were still hard, so that really hurt. Johnson noticed this and smirked. I am surprised that you managed to do that, but you are still dead. He held out both hands like we holding a big sword. Jewel Jewel Broadsword. A giant blade made of onyx formed in his hands. When he charged the blonde, he fell on his ass because the ship hit the spot where the cannonballs hit the water, creating a smaller whirlpool in the giant one. That sent them deeper into the maelstrom. Growling at his misfortune, Johnson got back to his feet and rushed the blonde with his giant black sword. Naruto did a matrix as he dodged a horizontal swing before he sprung off his hand and kicked the man in the face, the only part of him that was not covered in diamond. Taking advantage of the man's obvious pain in the face, he created a rather large chakra hand and fed the man in the face, sending him barreling into his own cabin. Naruto smirked as he kept the hand active while also bringing out a sword of his own, Samahada. He smirked as the sword seemed to purr in his grasp as it ate some of his chakra. Just don't eat all of it, I need it to kick this guy's ass. The sword vibrated for a second, before the bandages were ripped off, revealing a very menacing sword. Uh, so I underestimated you, doesn't matter, I will kill you, Johnson said as he walked out from his cabin and saw the rather large a creepy sword in the blonde's hand. Interesting sword, I'll be sure to take good care of it when you are dead, he said, with some of his hair covering his face. Somehow I doubt that. Samahada is very picky who wields her. You would use get your chakra sucked out and die. Naruto retorted. How dare you mock me? Johnson screamed as he rushed the blonde in a blind rage. Gotcha, Naruto thought as he locked blades with the man. He used chakra to amp up his muscles and overpower the man as he rested Samahada on the man's struggling shoulder. Oh there is something you should know about this sword. It doesn't cut. It shreds. Naruto shouted as brought the sword back and it scraped against the diamond at first but then it shredded that and screwed up the man's shoulder. The hell? Is that thing made out of sea stone? Johnson thought in shock as he held his bleeding shoulder. That shocked state was all Naruto needed as he brought his giant golden fist back before he uppercut the man and sent him high in the air. 
Naruto then made multiple golden hands appear out of the sail and mast of the ship and other various parts as they pounded Johnson much like how Lee battled Gara. Then seemed to crack Johnson's armor in a few places and as he fell, the man noticed the blonde had created a large sphere of energy in his hand. Naruto smirked as he thrust the sphere at the man's chest as he fell toward him. Take this, Odama Rasengan. The large Rasengan drilled into the cracked diamond armor before it was completely shattered. It drilled into the man's chest as he screamed in agony before the attack blew up and sent the man soaring into the sky like a rocket. Looking around, Naruto noticed that the ship was nearing the center of the maelstrom. He shot his eyes toward Sarah's who was looking in awe at him before he rushed over to his sword and sealed it away and rushed over to the girl. You ready to go Sarah's? Yep. She said as she recovered from her shock and panicked at how close they were to the middle. Well hold on tight then. Naruto ordered and Sarah's grabbed a hold on him from behind, not noticing that her huge s were pushing against his back. Damn you Jiraiya. Must not think, perverted thoughts at a time like this. Wind style. Sonic shot. He said as they rocketed back to the small island, with Sarah's screaming the whole way. Gamabunta was able to catch them with no problem as he set them on the island where Najiko was. Well done brat. Now I am going if you don't mind. With that, the giant toad disappeared in a large poof of smoke. That was amazing Naruto. Najiko cheered with a bright smile as Sarah's detached herself from Naruto's back. I agree, but that was way too fast for me. Sarah's shakily said as she fixed her hair weakly. Glad you approve. Now that I have drained all the chakra that Kayubi gave me, along with my own, I am going to pass out. Naruto said as he fell over with a grin on his face. Before Najiko or Sarah's could move Naruto, they heard clapping with the clang of metal. That was quite a display of power. And I am glad those marines are taken care of. Now I can take this island as my own, but first I am going to have to kill all three of you. Najiko stared at the man in front of them. He wore a black business suit, black furred glove that had huge blades on each finger and he used the heel of his hand to adjust his glasses. XXX in the Gold Roger bar at Logue Town, a man was at the counter drinking calmly and reading a newspaper. His Sharingan eyes scanned the content before his face grew a small smile. Still helping people you don't know, E.H. Naruto? His eyes shot over to the wall to see the blonde's wanted poster and the boy's new bounty. And who the hell would you be? Najiko asked harshly. I am known as Captain Kuro, even though I am trying to be someone else. The man said with a bow before he looked between the three. The boy should be easy to kill off once these two women are dead. The blue haired one seems fond of him. Never heard of you but I don't really care either, glared Najiko. I won't let you hurt my friends. Sarah smiled weakly at that. She didn't know if she could fight as she was very tired but she also knew that as a true vampire, she could not die of conventional ways, especially by the fool's sword claws, or whatever the hell they were. So getting into a fighting stance, she got ready for anything. However, with a large smirk from Captain Kuro, that ready for anything feeling was wiped away as the man disappeared from view. The next thing she knew, she was stabbed through the back with all five blades. Too tired to help the blue haired woman, she laid there in hopes that she won while she rested. Najiko stared in shock. This man was nearly as fast as Naruto. That fact that she had been training with the blonde was the only thing that let her see this. Of course, her senses were what allowed her to see this, but she knew that body could not keep up just yet. It was then that something happened. Her eyes widened as she felt like she knew what going to happen before it would. Strange. So she back flipped and landed near the edge of the small island. Smirking, she took this as her advantage and sent a jutsu out at random, hoping it would hit. Water style. Tsunami fist. The water rose behind her until it formed a fist out of the small wave and it luckily slammed right into Kuro just as he appeared and tried to take her head off. The attack slammed right into the man's stomach, knocking all the air out of him and stunning the man for a few seconds and that was all Najiko needed as she performed a roundhouse kick, sending him skidding into the water. Coughing as he heaved himself out of the water, he glared hatefully at the blue haired woman. How, how can you do these things? First you somehow dodge my attack and then you attack me with water of all things? Najiko smirked, irking that man. I have no clue how I knew to dodge that attack, but the water attack was just a jutsu, not a devil fruit power like most would think. Jutsu? Yeah, 
a technique that uses the body's energy to form these strange attacks. Naruto-kun taught me, she said and wondering why she added the suffix. So that boy has a power that many cannot do eh? Kuro replied before a smirk appeared on his face, maybe I should capture him and force him to teach me these things. Najiko's eyes widened before they took on dangerous tint, I won't let you. You may not have a choice. Two of your comrades are incapacitated and you are weakened from your part in that epic battle, but I wonder how it is possible for you to do these things? Kuro spoke before he rushed the girl again. As the blue haired dodged the attacks as best she could, she thought back to her training. Flashback. All right, now that we got your chakra working for you, I want to see what element you are aligned to. Naruto said as he rummaged through his coat for the item he needed. After the first week of training and with the town that Arlong destroyed, now repaired, he could now focus on training and getting the boat done. However, Najiko said she wanted to train as well, so first he had to get her chakra working for her and he found it rather easy for some reason. Got it? Naruto cheered as he produced a small rectangular piece of paper. You have got to be kidding me. That paper can tell all that? Najiko asked as she took the paper from the blonde, I don't understand. Well, I had the same reaction when I first did this. Naruto said while rubbing the back of his head. Anyway, you channel chakra into it and it will show you what type of element you have. It burned for fire, get soaked for water, turn to dust for earth, crumple for lightning, and slice in half for wind. Seeing the skeptical look on the blue haired woman's face, he decided to do it himself. So, talking another from his coat, he channeled his own chakra to and smirked at the reaction that he got from the woman. The paper had split in half before each half crumpled and soaked. Najiko's jaw was on the floor as Naruto smirked at her. So taking a deep breath, Najiko channeled her chakra into the card and was shocked to find that the card was completely soaked. Well now. This good, Naruto said. We both have water, so I can teach you what I know while we both learn the higher techniques for our training. He paused for a minute before he smirked. We are also going to create a jutsu just for you. Oh, what kind? Najiko asked as she folded her arms under her S. Oh we will just have to see what kinds of water jutsu you excel at, I think. Naruto said as he turned with a pervert blush on his face as he raised his fist in the air. What I do know is that it will be awesome. He did not want Najiko to think he was pervert before he had allowed himself to eye her strange tattoo and it seemed to cover her S. Then he felt her arms wrap around his torso and he blushed harder as he felt her S on his back. Thanks Naruto. Najiko said cheerfully. No problem. Naruto squeaked out, trying to keep his hormones under control, although he did not know why she wanted to learn all this stuff, but he didn't want to think on it right now. End flashback. Najiko could not help but chuckle a bit at that memory. She could not help but mess with the blonde every now and then. However, she needed all her attention on this Kuro guy so that she could find an opening to use that jutsu. XXX in the darkness of unconsciousness, a vision of death appeared before the blonde. A vision of someone he deeply cared for. Najiko. That shook him awake, but his vision was very blurry. He was still dog tired from using all that chakra. So, with this bad vision, he made out two figures, one was attacking the other with its hands that looked way too long. He needed to help Najiko, but when he tried to get up, noticed that his and leg was broken. Of course, he ignored he pain when he was fighting that Commodore, but now it hurt too much to try and move. Sarah saw this and looked at her new friend sadly, but her eyes widened when she saw Naruto point out his good arm and shakily pointed at the current fight. She saw Naruto concentrate and that blue energy from before formed. Smirking slightly, Naruto whispered, Sucker punch. Najiko felt it again and ducked just in time for the chakra hand to punch into a shocked Captain Kuro's face, making him stagger back a few feet as he held his face. Najiko smiled as Naruto's genius. She would thank him later but right now, she had to take advantage of this. She slung her gun out and pointed it right at Kuro's chest. It glowed with chakra for a minute until she called out her attack. Water style. Poseidon's trident. Tendrils of water shot up out of the ocean and shot toward the gun engulfing the chakra around it. She smirked as she pulled the trigger and a single bullet shot out with the water traveling with it. In slow motion, one could see the water swirling violently like the Rasengan as it formed into a three-pointed spear. Then it stabbed the man right above the heart, but the other two prongs went into the lungs. Then all hell for the man broke loose as it exploded both on the inside and the outside. 
The violent water explosion ripped up his insides and on the outside it sent him skidding to where the giant maelstrom was dissipating, but he was still sucked under. Smiling at her work, Najiko rushed up to Sarah's only to be shocked that her wounds had already healed up. W what? How it this possible? Simple, I am a vampire, so I cannot be killed by conventional means. Besides, I was just tired. Sarah's said, scaring the crap out of the blue-haired woman. Oh thank God. Smiled Najiko as she sighed in relief. Yep. Smiled Sarah's, before a curious look appeared on her face. Since this island will be visible for a few days, we should rest here. She paused for a moment and asked, Could you tell me about the two of you? I am thinking about joining since it has been so long since I have been in the world. Nodding, Najiko began to tell her all that she knew of the blonde and herself as well. XXX Itachi looked at the village of Konoha from his position on the Hokage Monument. It had not changed that much, that was for sure. So he quietly made his way down the monument and into the village. He needed this to work. Appearing in the center of the village, Itachi just stood there until he walked in a familiar ramen stand as everyone stared in shock at the Uchiha. If this did not work, then he would either die by the hands of the Akatsuki or his old village. Sitting down, he saw the shocked faces of the Ichiraku ramen workers. Hello. Ayame developed a tick on her brow. You kill your clan and become a missing nin, and now you just waltz into town like nothing happened. What do you expect will happen? It is simple Ayame-chan. I have a feeling as where Naruto is and I am going to him. These ninja will simply help me in getting to him. Ayame gained an enraged look on her face as she jumped over the counter and tackled the man. You are just trying to take Naruto back to the Akatsuki, aren't you? No, Itachi calmly said. Then what do you plan to do? A voice said from behind them. They looked and saw it was Kakashi with his usual lazy look, but no book. Kakashi-san. Itachi said as he got up. It has been a while. Kakashi said. So where is you partner? I thought Jiraiya told you he killed him, Itachi said calmly. He had not been feeling well. Stated Kakashi. Enough chit chat. I really don't feel like fighting today, so I am finishing this in one move. He lifted the headband to reveal his new Sharingan. So, you have acquired it as well, Itachi said with a raised eyebrow. Yes. Said Kakashi as his pinwheel-like Sharingan spun and Itachi noticed the air around him distort. He smirked as his own eyes changed as well. Kakashi noricked something new and he gawked at the Uchiha. You have that Sharingan? Yes and I must thank you for your help. Itachi said as he bowed and the distortion expanded and engulfed him. I take my leave. With that, he was gone. Leaving the confused shinobi and ramen waitress in his wake. As he traveled through the strange portal that leads to another world, he found himself in the middle of a new town, a town called Logue Town. Sometime later, he was seen in a bar called the Gold Roger. He looked from the paper he was reading to the poster on the wall and smirked. Still helping people you don't know, E.H. Naruto? Itachi calmly said as he looked at Naruto's bounty of 100 million belly. XXX Naruto awoke with a stiff back and the sound of someone rummaging through debris. That is when it hit him, the attack on the marines and then his half-awake sucker punch. He shot up and looked around. He found Najiko's chakra signature on the ship and he saw Sarah's pulling some contraption out of the rubble of her destroyed home. With a final tug, came a very large device. It seemed the device had a backpack-like feature with two of those huge-ass guns that she had used before. Ah finally! My Harkonnen too is safe! She cheered before felt like eyes were on her and she saw Naruto looking at her oddly. Smirking, she took in a deep breath and said, Najiko, he is awake. The sound of scrambling was heard before he saw the blue haired woman jump out the ship and land next to him. How are you feeling? A uh, better than when I woke up before. How long was I out away way? Naruto asked. About two days, Najiko said, making Naruto groan. Ah, don't worry about it. You needed rest anyway, Najiko said, trying to cheer up her captain. I guess so, Naruto said. I mean, I used a lot of chakra in those attacks. He paused as he got up and pounded his fist to his palm. In addition to weight training and sage mode training, I am going to have to learn more control over my chakra. Well that is good trying to improve yourself, but it can only do some much when there is only the two of you. So, if you don't mind, I am joining your crew. Sarah's voice from in the rumble said as there was a crash. 
Rounding to see what happened, all he saw was the vampire girl and the metal briefcase she had in her hand. Wait, you want to join us? Yes. The girl said. I owe you that much for helping me, I also want to see the world and what it has become. Shrugging, Naruto said as he put his arms behind his back, well that is fine with me. Hey, I am just glad we have another person for our little gang. Good, but there are two things that you must know. Sarah said as she opened the case to reveal two large handguns, one is silver and the other is black. These two guns belongs to the man that was like my father, in vampire terms anyway. Alucard told me to give these to someone who proved themselves worthy to me and I chose you. Naruto took the guns tenderly and then smiled. Thanks but, should I really be the one to have these? Yes. From what I saw during that battle you are more than ready to have those and it seems you want to get stronger, so these should help. Sarah said with a smile. And the other thing you must know is something you have really no say in the matter. Najiko as she put her hand on his shoulders. That bit didn't sit well with the blonde ninja as he tensed up at their smiles that seemed a little evil, what is it? Before he could react, both girl rushed up and kissed his cheeks, making him blush hard. W what was that about? He squeaked out. Well, while we were taking while you slept, the way Najiko talked about you very fondly and I guessed right that she was in love with you. I too have gained a crush on you through the attack and, Sarah said as she held her left arm. Pip would not want me to be alone for the rest of my life. Naruto looked at them in shock, but by the end of it all he thought he understood Saris's pain of being alone. Pip must have been someone she loved but then died. He smiled and sighed, but why me? You helped us more than it was needed and that kind of attitude is hard to find in the world. No one is more selfless than we know and that quality is very admirable. I just hope you won't mind the two of us, Najiko said. Let's see, two very hot women that are older than me, like me in a romantic way and they are both rather nice, even though one of them can go on a berserker vampiric rage. Still, I like it, Naruto thought. Hey, you do know I am younger, right? Naruto, you are basically as tall as this, so no one will bother with it, Najiko said with a smile. Hey, alright then, and just so you know, I will love the both of you equally, I can't choose between the two of you. Naruto said with a blush as he rubbed the back of his head. I kind of figured that. You are just too nice, Najiko said with a smirk. Putting the guns in the seal of his coat, he jumped to the ship with a big smile. All right. We set sail for that floating restaurant, he shouted as he made a few clones to get the ship ready to leave. I swear. One track mind, Najiko said with a sigh before she eyed the clones and blushed as a trickle of blood came out of her nose. Looking to Sarah's, it she too had the same thoughts. The two women nodded before jumping onto the boat. As soon as they boat, detached from Bad Island, the island itself seemed to just disappear. Sarah's explained that it didn't go underwater, just disappear into thin air. It was her home that she had lived on to stay away from people. She could see all from the island, but no one could see what was right in front of them as they passed through it. Naruto shook his head. He could not believe that he got a new crew member but also two girlfriends. I swear, Jiraiya would love this and try to make a book out of this. He thought before he shrugged it off and walked back to the two women. XXX. Achu. Jiraiya sneezed. Someone must be talking about me. I wonder if it is Naruto. Tsunade said as she signed a few papers. Oh I hope it is good then. Jiraiya said. I don't know but you won't live to find out if you don't start helping me with these papers. Suande growled as the man said he was going to help but kept finding excuses to not do it. XXX a few hours later, they arrived at the floating restaurant. Sarah's had told him that she needed blood to survive, but could still eat normal food. So, she took some of his blood and it didn't even hurt. After that, he had thought up a great idea after hearing about Najiko's battles. He had sent a clone to his cabin, along with their guns and it got to work on them. Anyway. Now they docked the ship and walked into the place. Naruto was in awe of the place and the smell of the food was intoxicating. However, as they walked to their table, a young waitress noticed them and her eyes widened at the sight of Naruto's belt. It had the symbol of her home village. No one here knew of Konoha at all, so how did they guy know about it? So, walking right up to them, she asked, not to be rude, but how do you know of Konoha? No one here has ever heard of it. Naruto looked at the girl to see the marks of an Inazuka on her face, but she did not have a dog. He thought about what she asked and said, 
Well, it is simple really, Konoha is connected to this world, but my question is how did you get here? Blinking. The girl had not expected that answer. She expected to get a weird answer like most of the idiot pirates that she asked. Um, I am not sure. I was with the others fighting of the Kayubi and then some weird chakra surrounded me, like in some sort of explosion and then I was here with this odd fruit in my hands. I see. Naruto thought out loud, he decided to let her join them at the table while they all ate. During that time, Naruto got her up to par with what had happened in Konoha since she was gone and introducing each other. Sighing, she said. Wow, losing both of us really screwed Kakashi up. She had a sad look on her face. Still, I hope he is alright. Oh I am sure his is. Naruto said, you can say hi the next time I write a letter to Konoha. That is another thing. Why can't you reverse summon yourself back to Konoha? Blinking rapidly, Naruto replied, the old toad said that there was something interfering with that. Besides, I can't go home yet, I still need to find my mom. He paused. Hey, I have been curious about this, but are you related to Kiba? Who? Um, he is an Inazuka. I think his mom's name is Sume. I am his aunt then. Sume was my older sister, Rin said with a smile, making form an O oh with his mouth. Najiko decided to cut in at this point. So, can we see this fruit of yours? Sure. Rin chirped. She took an odd looking fruit out of her outfit and showed it to them. It was in the shape of an orange with swirls on it but it was bright pink. I have asked this to a few pirates but they just look it in fear. It is because it is a rare type of devil fruit, Sarah said. Oh, Rin asked. I heard about some of those. I am sure you have, Najiko said. My sister is on a crew with the pirate named Monkey D. Luffy and he ate a fruit that turned him into a rubber man. Whoa really? Asked Rin with excitement. Yes, replied Sarah's as she grew serious, but when someone eats the fruit, they lose the ability to swim, forever. Shrugging, the girl said, I guess that is what water walking is for, so what kind is it? It is the German Shepherd model, Zeph, the lead chef said as he walked up to them. I have seen it once but the fool died because she could not use its powers the right way. You see it relies on defense and the man was more offensive. Zef. Oh I am sorry for slacking off, Rin quickly said and bowed. It is no problem Rin. You already paid off you meal, now I assume you wish to travel with these people. Rin nodded. Yes, even though I can no longer return to Konoha, I want to see what this world has to offer and it is even better to travel with someone who is from Konoha. She paused as she smiled at the fruit. Besides, I am Medic Nin and this fruit could be very useful to me. A doctor huh? Zeph grunted. You just became even more valuable to these people. Every pirate crew should have a doctor in case of emergencies. He paused for a moment. Kid, just know that these devil fruits do not taste good. Medicine doesn't either. She retorted and chowed down on the fruit with haste. About halfway through, she stopped and whined. Ew it is worse than medicine. Well, if you want to join us, you are free to come along, Naruto said after a minute of her gagging on air because of the fruit. Thanks Naruto, Rin said with a weak smile, before they paid and left. Their journey awaited them. On the deck of the ship, Naruto was facing the front and if one looked closely, they would see him trembling. Turning to his face, one could see a too happy smile on his face as he giggled in delight, but in his mind he was laughing maniacally. Why? Well he held in his hand the recipe to his favorite food. Ramen, which no one seemed to know what it was. Thinking back to their time at the floating restaurant, he smiled with glee. Flashback. No way. Naruto said in shock. Oh just take it brat. You are really the only one who has bothered to order that dish for who knows how long, Zef, the head chef said. Thanks old man, you just made my day. Naruto said as he left with his crewmates and new crew member Rin. Weird kid. Zef muttered to himself as he turned to go back into the kitchen. End flashback. Sarah's looked over the boy's shoulder and quirked her eyebrow. A ramen recipe. That is what has gotten you so excited, she said suddenly, scaring the boy as he jumped ten feet in the air. He rounded on her and sighed, man, I should really be more aware of my surroundings, he said while rubbing the back of head. Anyway, yeah it is. Back home, ramen was pretty popular in Konoha. I see, I wonder why it didn't take off here, Sarah said. Oh well, 
Everyone else's loss, chuckled Naruto. Now I just need to find a cook to make this wonderful stuff. Well, started Sarah's. You know that as a vampire, I drink blood to stay alive, but I have learned to cook over the years. I could do it for you. Really, sweet, cheered Naruto, making the blonde woman giggle at his antics. Right, so we have a cook who is a trigger happy vampire, another gun specialist that uses water, a crazy ramen loving captain, and me the medic of the group. Rin stated as she came up from below in her ninja attire, she wore a long sleeved black top, a high waist, light purple skirt apron under which she wore shorts. She also wore a forehead protector, sandals as well as what appeared to be dark stockings that stopped at her thighs. What a motley crew, but I guess that same could be said for my old team, she said with a warm laugh. Motley indeed. Najiko said as she came down from the crow's nest before she turned to address her crazy captain. I know I should have said this before, but I heard at the restaurant that pirates usually name their ships. So Naruto-kun, what is the name of our ship? Naruto put on a thoughtful expression and said, I was thinking of naming it the Dream Seeker. Before any of the girls could question why, they heard the squawk of a bird. The same odd bird that delivered the paper to anyone on the seas that had money. Deciding to get one, Naruto's eyes widened at what he saw. Well, looks like we need to train a lot more now. He made a shadow clone before dispelling it. Another clone came up from below and hand him a few things. Training? What kind of training? Asked Rin, for some reason fearful of it. The kind of training that will help us survive the Grand Line and anything the world government throws at us, Naruto said as he pointed to a large scroll the clone had brought up. Rin, that scroll is from Granny Tsunade. She said that if I gained a medic, I should let you learn from that, since my control over my chakra sucks. Wow, this will help greatly. Thank you, Rin said with a smile, but please, show some respect to Lady Tsunade. Like you said, she is the fifth Hokage now. Naruto just smirked at that before he pointed to Saris's large guns. Saris chan I have applied seals to your guns that take in the surrounding energy in the air and converts it to pure lightning energy, you do seem like a lightning type to me. All you have to do is send your chakra or whatever energy you have into the gun and it will shot out lightning. Now that is awesome. Will I be learning any of those cool lightning jutsu you used? Saris asked with stars in her eyes. I could be I will also be helping you create your own jutsu like I did with Najiko. Sweet. The blonde woman cheered. Naruto smiled at her enthusiasm before he turned to Najiko, I have done the same with yours, only with water and I think if you train hard enough, you can make ice. Well, that certainly helps. Najiko said before she noticed Naruto's new guns were in the pile. What did you do to your guns? Oh the same except with all three elements, water, lightning, and wind cheered Naruto. Wait. Are you going to be training as well? asked Rin before she noticed the clone from earlier draw seals on the deck of the ship. Naruto cracked his knuckles as he smirked. Oh yeah, I get to get stronger as well. I have jutsu to master along with my swords and my new guns. Creating a few clones to do that, he himself summoned the elder toads. Ma, pa, training has resumed. I need to learn how to use sage mode. Very well Naruto boy, just so you know, I have noticed that the closer we get this grand line, the stronger the nature chakra in the air becomes. Fakusaku said. Hmm, then it should get easier for me, Naruto reasoned, not noticing the frog roll his eyes, as he got ready. Meanwhile, Rin and Saras looked on in shock. I can't believe he has the toads, Rin said. Yeah, he used Gamabunta to help me out a while back. I just don't understand how this will make him stronger, Saras said. I am not sure either, but I heard Lord Jiraiya became a sage because of that fact, Rin offered. XXX meanwhile other people were getting the paper as well. No way. Nami shouted, making the crew of the going merry crowd around her to see what was up this time. What is it Nami? Luffy asked. This Naruto is in the paper again, but there is a new bounty on him along with his two crew members, Nami said handing the paper to them along with two wanted posters while she stared in shock at the third. Whoa! Luffy shouted as he looked at Naruto's with Sanji and Zoro. 150 million belly, what did he do? Well it says that he went against the world government to save some girl called Saras, the Crimson Berserker. Usopp said as he read some of the paper. Apparently, 
They say she is a threat because she has lived for centuries and could reveal secrets that the world government doesn't want to get out. That and she is a vampire. Cool. Luffy cheered. I have a lot of respect for this guy, saving a girl he doesn't know. Kinda of remains you of someone, huh? Sanji said to Zoro as they stared at Saris's poster. Sanji looked at it for a moment and said. Hey, take away the blood and angry look, you have the essence of beauty. Zoro sighed. Is that all you think about? No, food too, Sanji said. Whatever, Zoro said. Still, a 70 million belly bounty is pretty high. Chopper and Vivi were staring at Nami for she had a gobsmacked expression. What is the matter Nami? Chopper asked. Is it someone you know? Asked Vivi. Silently, Nami nodded and turned the poster around. The picture was not a close-up like the others. It showed Najiko on a giant toads with a tonto. It is my sister. What? Really? Luffy said as he used his rubber to stretch up and take and look at the picture himself. Whoa, she is on a giant toad, he exclaimed as he took the poster to show the others. Ah, Nami's elder sister, such beauty, Sanji said with hearts in his eyes. Chopper, in his muscular form peered over their shoulders and said, Wow, 22 million. He paused as he looked at her new nickname. Poseidon's daughter, did she eat a devil fruit? I am not sure but this Naruto better take good care of her, Nami said while crossing her arms. XXX Genzo stared in shock but he burst out laughing. Doc, take a look at this. What is it? The doctor asked. It's Najiko, Genzo said. Observing the poster, the doctor said, well, she certainly knows how to make a picture like this epic. XXX somewhere in Alabasta. Nico Robin was also going through the paper and when she saw Naruto and his friends fighting off the marines, she froze in shock. Looking at the boy's face, she thought, he, he looks just like Minato. She then narrowed her eyes. If this was indeed her son, then she could not let Crocodile get to him for the man's needs in his company. She would play dumb for now and steer the man away from her son and she really hoped he was. Although, another question needed to be answered. How did he get to this world in the first place? Sure she got to his world through one of the ruins by accident and then sent back by the one-eyed cripple, but how did her son get here in the first place? XXX a few days later on the ship, Naruto and Najiko are sparring on the deck with Sarah's observing. As she threw a punch at the blonde's face, who swiped it to the side easily, Najiko asked, So, how close are you to getting that toad sage mode thing that you wanted? I am almost there, but for some reason, Ma wants me to eat her bug stew or something like that. He said as he brought his head to the side to avoid getting punched in the face while he sent a punch of his own. She dodged it rather easy as it was not at full strength and sent a round house kick to his face, making him lean back quite a bit so he would not get hit. Gross. Yeah and I can't crack the joke about there being a bug in my soup. Naruto whined a bit before he smirked and did a maneuver with his foot, tripping up Najiko and making her fall backward. However, she wasn't going down alone, before she was too far away. She grabbed him by the collar and dragging him down with her. She fell on her back and he almost landed on her if not for him putting his arms out at the last minute to catch himself. However, he did feel her soft s on his chest, making them both blush as they stared into each other's eyes for a bit before he leaned in to kissed her, with Najiko leaning up and into the kiss to make it deeper. Sarah's smiled at that before certain thoughts entered her mind and made her blush and have a slight nose bleed. While she was having her pervy moment thinking about what all three of them could do at the same time and with Naruto's clones, Rin decided to break up this moment with a shout from the crow's nest. I hate to break up the love fest down there, but there is land up ahead and that means we can restock this ship. Said Rin with a slight smirk. Quickly getting off the blue haired woman with a blush he rubbed the back of his head nervously and said, Right, where are we going again? Najiko, still with a blush, said, Logue Town, remember? This is the place that the famed goal. D. Roger was born and then killed. It is also the last major place between here and the Grand Line. Oh okay then. Naruto said with a smile. Guess that is one place for me to visit while I am here. To see where they killed the most famous pirate ever. Najiko shook her head at the blonde's antics as they docked the ship. Rin jumped down from the crow's nest and land next to her crewmates. I think we should pair up, you know, for just in case. Rin stated. Naruto took on a thinking pose and said, Yes, that would be a good idea and to mix things up a bit, 
the new crew members will go with the old. Fine with me. Rin said with a smile, but I am taking Najiko with me. Not objecting to the plan Naruto said, okay, I need to get to know Sarah's more anyway. He then put an arm around said girl, who blushed a bit but did not argue. Naruto then snapped his fingers. That's right, you two will need some money. He then took out a scroll and tossed it to Najiko. That holds a few thousand belly, which should be enough, right? Oh I think that is plenty. Laughed the blue haired woman before they jumped off the boat and strolled into town. Naruto turned to Sarah's and held out an arm. Well, shall we, my lady? he asked in a goofy manner that made her giggle a bit. Sarah's smiled and said in the same playful tone, We shall. Before taking linking her arm with hers and then going off into town, laughing as most of the dock works stared at them oddly. XXX from high above, a shadow jumped from building to building as it observed the couple of Naruto and Sarah's. It had no interest in the blonde vampire its interest was in her blonde friend, was did not look like a trained killer in its eyes. However, the kid was the one who took out half a fleet of marine ships and the Commodore who had the jewel jewel fruit. It shook its head, he would let the boy have fun before he challenged the boy. Naruto's eyes shot to the side, while Sarah's was looking at some stuff to buy. He felt that someone was watch them and that kept him on guard. Turning back to his vampire friend, he saw her going into a clothing store, so he reluctantly followed a feeling of dread creeping into him. For a half an hour, Sarah's tried on clothes before putting them back and making her blonde companion ask if they were okay or not. Not Naruto's idea of fun until they got to the last pairs of clothing that she actually bought. A slim red Chinese dress that showed off all of her curves, making Naruto have a small nosebleed because it squeezed her essay bit, making them more pronounced. She got this since she became a pirate on Naruto's crew and thought it would be a good distraction for her enemies. She also got it because the way Naruto looked at her. She had gotten to know the kid and although he could be dense in some things, he was a good guy at heart and she liked that in a guy. So in her opinion, she chose well and was glad that she came with them. Hey Naruto, you think you can draw the Cromwell seals on the back of this? She asked with a smile. Naruto nodded, unable to speak at the moment, which made her giggle a bit. Soon after that, they came upon an ice cream shop and ordered some gelato. Even, though Sarah's drank blood to stay alive, she could still enjoy normal food, so she got strawberry while Naruto got some chocolate with hazelnuts in it. After that, they walked to a nearby park, holding hands until they neared a bench and sat down. A few minutes later, after Naruto was quiet for a little bit, he said, thanks again, you know, for joining us. Sarah's smiled at that. It is no problem Naruto-kun. I am glad I did. I like you because you are a caring person. That is a good quality in some one and for pirate, that is rare. And this way, I can see more of the world and how it has changed. She leaned over and kissed him on the check, before he turned his own head to kiss her on the lips, however, that moment didn't last very long. Hey! Demon eyes! A voice rung out and the owner appears a few yards away from them. Naruto quirked an eyebrow, you had to show yourself now? XXX Najiko and Rin were doing some shopping of their own with Rin getting a few medical supplies and Najiko. Ammo, when someone called out to them. The blue-haired woman raised an eyebrow at the very feminine-looking guy walking right up to them. He had long black hair, a weird green battle dress with a mask on his hip and shinobi sandals. The only reason they could think of that they knew he was a guy was that he had no bust. Excuse me, I know this may sound odd, but I saw your headband and I have to know, are you from Konoha? The feminine-looking guy asked. Rin blinked several times before saying, why yes I am, how did you know? Because I have fought some before, one in particular. His name is Naruto Uzumaki, do you know him? The two girls blinked in shock. Yeah we know him, he is our captain, Najiko said. Oh good. Please take me to him, I need to ask him how I got to this strange world because I should be dead after his sensei, Kakashi, killed me with his Chidori. Rin's jaw dropped. Kakashi killed you? Then you must Haku, dot the one that Naruto sometimes talks about. The one who told him the true meaning of strength. Flashback. Man, Tsunade Sama really has extensive knowledge on all things medical. Rin said with amazement, though for some reason, she was also very interested in the secret to insane strength. Hey, that is true, heck I guess she had to. I mean she did save my life a few times. Naruto said, 
reminding the girl the story he told her about his first fight fighting with her against Kabuto and Orochimaru. Hey, I have been meaning to ask you this, but how are you so strong? Rin asked, with Saras and Najiko coming over to listen as well. Naruto put on a serious look as he mentioned the girls to sit down on the deck. It is simple really. You remember me tell you about Team 7's mission to wave country, right? Well yeah, it was the first story you told me, said it was a big impact on your life, Najiko said. Yeah well, even though Kakashi killed Haku, that guy really taught me something a few days before the fight. He paused there before saying, he told me the true meaning of strength. Do not fight for yourself like my Jinchuriki brother Gara. Fight for others, fight to protect those precious to you and you will know what true strength is. Najiko snapped her fingers at that. So that is how you became so strong when you fought Oolong. You were fighting for me and the rest of Kokoyashi. Bingo. Naruto said with a thumbs up. I will keep that in mind then. Rin said with Sarah's nodding in agreement. Oh and there is one more thing and it ties in perfectly. Naruto said as he got their attention again. I got this from Kakashi, though I don't really know how it would work in this world of pirates. Those who don't follow the rules are trash but those who don't help their comrades are worse than trash. It seemed that they took those words to heart, end flashback. Haku smiled brightly at that, and that made Rin blush for some reason, I am glad he took those words to heart. Now, shall we be going? He asked before they felt intense chakra in the distance. Najiko sighed, someone must have pissed him off, he said before they ran off to see what was up. Across the street, a very hot woman raised an eyebrow. Well, seems we have another upstart and his crew here in Logue Town. The infamous demonized Naruto, Poseidon's daughter Najiko, and Crimson Berserker Saras. Let's see if they are truly what the paper says. The woman said as she hefted her huge spiked iron club. Buggy has been complaining about being bored, annoying crown. XXX above the streets, the figure of Itachi felt a familiar chakra presence and smiled. Well, it is about time Naruto-kun. Naruto quirked an eyebrow, you had to show yourself now? Hey, so I ruined a moment. Bugging wop. The voice said as it came out of the shadows. The person revealed had long spiky red hair with black tips and sharp orange eyes. He had on a black short sleeved shirt with sea stone chain mesh over that, blue jeans with the same mesh on it, and combat boots. To top that off, he a strange rod on his hip that had a cylindrical arrow on it. You know, if you are trying to make friends, you are failing epically, Naruto dead panned. Hey, friends. The guy said to himself with a mirthless laugh before he looked straight at Naruto and smirked. He seemed to disappear while saying something under his breath and then reappear right in front of the shocked blonde to deliver a punch straight to his face, sending him back a yard or two as he fell on the ground. What the hell? He had ninja speed. Getting back up. Naruto looked to see the guy just staring at him in shock while holding his fist. Saras, who was not too far from him, looked pissed. All right, what the hell? I should be asking the same damn question. The bounty hunter growled out. When I made skin contact with you, I should have taken some of your power. Now Naruto was even more confused and he felt like a little kid when he asked, what? Eye twitching, the bounty hunter sighed. Okay it is obvious you don't know who I am and what my power even is. He sighed again before continuing. My name is Genku Ketsueki, which also means blood copy if you are too dense to figure that out as well. Yeah? Well I have never heard of you, Naruto said with crossed arms. Oh really? Asked Ketsueki, actually surprised. What, do you live under a rock? I mean, a lot of people know about you and because of your displayed power, I thought you were a devil fruit user. Really? asked Naruto, annoyed. Does everyone here with powers have devil fruit powers? Pretty much, Ketsueki said. For example, I possess the rogue rogue fruit. Sorry, what? Sighing in irritation, Ketsueki said. It means that I can take the power of other fruit user and use their power as my own, but only at half power. However, I am skilled enough to store these powers and keep them for myself. Okay. That is a useful power. Naruto said, yeah and now I am going to fight you to see what you got, then maybe I will take your bounty. Naruto smiled with his eyes closed. He had been itching for a good brawl, but this guy just thought he was strong enough to take him in, just like that? He didn't think so. 
he snapped his eyes open and seeing that Sarah's was by his side, he smiled evilly while releasing a shitload of killer intent, sending Ketsueki to his knees. Fine then, let's see what you got. Let's see if you can take me down. XXX Najiko, Rin, and Haku had just felt Naruto's intense killer intent and somehow knew that someone must have pissed him off. So now they were rushing towards his location, but when an odd man stood in their way, they had to stop. Would you please move, we want to help our friend. The man was in a grayish business that was ripped in places that showed that he had been in a fight before, odd purple hair that curled at the top like ice cream, and strange sunglasses that looked like a thin band that stretched around his face. I am afraid that I can't let you do that. You see, I am here to stop you while my employer goes to kill him. Oh, and how would you stop us? Najiko asked. Why, with my sickle sickle fruit powers. Did he say sicko sicko freed powers? Haku asked Rin loudly. Why does every ask that? The man yelled. I guess we can't get any farther, Rin said as she got ready to fight. Yeah, I guess there is no way around this sicko, Najiko said while taking out her guns. Well, if I want some answers, I might as well fight along with you, Haku said as he brought out some Senban needles. Oh, going to fight me? Well that is fine, the business suited man said as he breathed onto his hand. I am afraid that I will be fighting, not you three, said a voice on the roof. Looking up, they saw a man in Akatsuki robes and jet black hair. Suspiciously, Najiko narrowed her eyes. What is a member of Akatsuki doing here? Not a member anymore, the man said. I am just here to help Naruto, but seeing as you are part of his crew, then I should be helping you as well. Uh, thanks? Rin said with uncertainty. No problem, now go. That man said and the three complied to the strangely calm man's request. The man in the business suit was eyeing the former Akatsuki member with a twitching eye. So, I can assume that you are helping the one known as Demon Eyes Naruto? Yes, now I would like to know the name of the sicko in front of me. The calm former Akatsuki said with a wary smile. I am not a sicko, the man yelled, but if you must know, my name is Eric. I see and my name is Uchiha Itachi. That's nice, but it won't matter soon. Eric said as he breathed into his hand and screamed, sickle sickled wind scythe chaotic strike. He slashed his hand many times though the air, sending a barrage of wind scythes at the calm man. They all hit the mark, but Eric was shocked when Itachi turned into a flock of crows. What the hell? He got out before he felt something sharp pressing on his neck. It is over. Itachi calmly said to Eric, who was sweating profusely. XXX Ketsueki growled to himself as he made his body get up, despite the strange pressure that was weighing him down and then grabbed his rod-like device and pressed a button that made the cylindrical point shot out along a thick metal wire. Naruto caught it before it hit his face, but he found that it was burning the hell out his hand and quickly dropped it. He looked at his hand to see it badly burnt and getting worse because of some strange liquid that was slowing eating away at his hand. Thankfully, Golden Chakra appeared and restored his hand and burnt away the liquid. The hell was that? Naruto growled out. Ketsueki smirked as he no longer felt the heaviness in the air. That is tipped with a corrosive poison that slowly eats away at the flesh and then seeps into you blood if you are not careful. He said before whipping at Naruto, however, Saras caught the metal rope part of the whip-like device before tugging on it hard enough for Ketsueki to be pulled towards them. Naruto smirked and thanked Saras before they both reared back their fist and sent their fists to Ketsueki, who was sent flying back into a window of a store. Growling as he pulled himself out of the rubble, Ketsueki yelled out, Rogue Rogue! Diamond Storm! Huge shards of diamond appeared before his body before it shot off toward Naruto and Saras. Saras did the smart thing because she leapt out of the way, Naruto however, did something different. He unleashed Samahada and batted away the fruit jewels away like nothing. Raising an eyebrow, Naruto asked, How did you get Commodore Johnson's power? Oh, that. It was right before you practically destroyed his fleet. First posed as Marine and got close to the guy. Then I got the hell out of there before the shit hit the fan. He smirked as he made the Black Onyx Buster Sword appear. Guess we shall see how you do against me with that man's power, he said before the two of them met in the middle with their swords clashing. In a nearby alley, a pirate whose wardrobe consisted of a clown's, T-S-T-O-O-D with his crew and his business partner, who was super hot and held her iron club on her shoulder like it was nothing. Soon, 
when he is worn out by this bounty hunter, we will show this new upstart that you can't always win, said the clown. Whatever you say, the woman said. The only reason they were back in Loeb Town was because the Marines were no longer there because they went after the Straw Hat Pirates and that meant that Loeb Town was free game again. Back to Naruto and Ketsueki, they backed up after their swords bounced off each other. Ketsueki recovered first and sending his sword towards the blonde, slicing his side. Naruto growled a bit before dropping his elbow onto the flat part of the onyx blade, breaking it into pieces. This shocked Ketsueki long enough for the blonde to bring his large sword around, the bandages around it shredding before it struck the side of Ketsueki. Smirking, Naruto rushed back a bit, shredding the sea stone armor and the skin underneath it. What? Ketsuki asked in a shocked tone as he held his bloody side. What was that sword made of to affect sea stone like that? It is over. Naruto said, holding his side until the golden chakra appeared again, healing his injury. Naruto straightened up as he made a chakra hand jump out of the ground and start choking Ketsueki. Yield. This battle is over. Before Ketsueki could reply, clapping was heard as a clown like pirate walked onto the scene with his crew and some very hot woman. Well, that was fun to watch, but you are just an upstart boy. Oh, yeah, I have more experience than you, and you and the leader of the Straw Hats come along like you are so badass. I buggy the clown will not let another brad become greater than me. The clown raged. Taking a page out of Kakashi's book, Naruto said nonchalantly, What did you say? Don't ignore me, Buggy yelled. I am going to kill you. Now if we have any say about that, Najiko's voice echoed in the square as she made his appearance along with Rin and Haku. Whoa, Haku, you are here too, Naruto said, completely distracted now. I guess so but it is odd how I am still alive and in this world as well. E.H. Well, I guess I have to chalk it up to how I entered this world, but right now, we have to fight Clownface and his friends. I am still here you know. Buggy growled before he turned his angry gaze to the new arrivals. And what are you doing here? I sent Eric to kill all of you. Oh, someone in an Akatsuki cloak appeared and took care of him for us, Rin stated. Naruto only knew one Akatsuki who would come all the way here to talk with him or fight him would be, Itachi. I guess so, but let's worry about that later, Najiko stated. Right, Naruto said before turning to Ketsueki and said, wanna fight with us? I guess I have no other choice. Ketsueki sighed, still, that blade really hurt. He then turned to the two new pirates and said, so, Buggy the Clown and Iron Club Alvida. I can only assume that this Eric you were talking about was Eric the bounty hunter that lost to the Straw Hat crew, but survived somehow when he was sent to the ocean. Yeah but if Itachi is fighting him, he won't last much longer, Naruto replied. Okay then. Ketsueki said. I'll take his crew while you and your friends deal with the main fools. He then went into the huge crew of clown pirates with his strange whip lashing out. Right. Naruto cheered as he went after Buggy. Sighing. Najiko smiled at her captain's battle plan, or their lack of. So she and Sarah's went after Alvida. Rin and Haku were the only ones left, but before they could help either party, they were confronted by two odd looking people. One had a white teddy bear hairdo, a white patch of fur over his shoulders, blue pants, and a yellow sash. The other had black hair that covered half of his face, a dark blue trench coat with the sleeves ripped off, a blue and white checkered scarf, a sword at his side. And a blue jeans. Then there was a huge lion with a purple mane. Okay, this world is getting odder by the second, Haku stated. Yeah, was Rin's reply. I'll take the girl with the marks on her cheek, the white haired man, Moji said. And I will take the girl in the green clothing, the swordsman, Kabaji said. Actually, Haku began with a smile, I am a boy. Both men stared in pure shock, before Kabaji leapt at him, with Haku leaping back easily, dodging the sword strike. Moji looked his lion friend and said, Okay, Richie, it is mealtime. He and the lion leapt at Rin, only to crash into a trash can. Rin was on the other side of them, waving merrily. My turn. She said with an evil smirk as her body began to change into that of her dog form. Mutt mutt fur growth. The fur all over her body grew to long lengths and then hardened. When the lion tried to claw at her, it just wore down the claws. Mutt Mutt Pin Cushion. 
The fur expanded until it looked like a ball with the girl inside. Moji and Richie stared in horror as the spiky hairball came rolling toward them and when the spikes hit the ground, the ground cracked and broke. Ran away. Moji screamed with tears in his eyes as the ball came after them, Richie right along with him. XXX out of the corner of his eyes, Naruto saw Rin trying to roll over Moji and Richie while Haku was fighting Kabaji with his ice mirrors, turning the swordsman into a pincushion. Turning back to Buggy, he was getting annoyed that this guy was splitting himself apart to attack Naruto. Of course, Naruto dodged them with ease, it was just annoying. With another kick and punch from the clown, he punched the leg away and took the arm to slap Buggy with his own hand. I could do this all day man. But even with those annoying powers of yours, I can see how a rubber man could kick your ass. Oh really? We will see about that. Buggy screamed and charged the blonde ninja with all his body parts armed with some sort of weapon. Oh please. Naruto deadpanned as he switched places with a log at the very last second, he then punted Buggy's head into a wall, but the clown was relentless as he just got back up. Don't you ever quit? Buggy just roared before charging at the blonde after he had reformed himself. Naruto sighed at the clown's stupidity, but the clown never gave up and Naruto gained some respect for him thanks to that. You asked for this yourself, he said as he went through a few hand signs. Lightning style. Thunderclap. XXX. Nojiko and Sarah's were literally trying to put holes in Alvida, but their bullets just slid past the good looking woman. Why do you keep shooting at me when you see that they just bounce of me? Alvida said boredly. We were just experimenting. Sarah's said with a smirk as Najiko looked at her with a smirk. They knew they thought alike and now it was time to take this chick down. Yeah, let's see you take our elemental attacks, Najiko stated. What? Alvida asked with her eyebrows raised. Najiko smirked as she pointed her gun directly at Alvida and called out, Poseidon's ripping torrent. The gun slowly started to gather water from the air around them until it actually looked like a gun made of water. Then he ced the trigger, sending all that water toward Alvida. It hit and sent her back a bit, but most of the water slipped past her. However, the attack did what was need because Alvida was completely wet and her surrounds were wet as well. Sarah's noticed it was her turn and thanks to Naruto's lightning just that she just noticed, it was easier for her gather the necessary electricity in the air around her Harkonnen before she smirked evilly at Alvida, who had a terrified look on her own face, she called out, Zeus rain. While Sarah's attack came out in a barrage of lightning, striking the water first before the woman, Naruto's attack had darkened the sky before a large bolt of lightning not that high in power, struck down on Buggy, but since he was near Naruto, the blonde caught some of it as the reaction of it on the ground sent him crashing into a nearby building. After all was said and done, Buggy and Alvida were in smoking craters that cackled with electricity every once in a while, but the two were still alive and well, just knocked out. Moji and Richie surrendered just before they were impaled by the hard spikes made of dog fur and Kabaji was on the ground with ice needles in his neck and put into a death-like state thanks to Haku. To top that off, most of Buggy's crew was unconscious thanks to Ketsueki. Ketsueki walked over to Naruto as he pulled himself out of the rumble and said, now that was quite an attack. Yeah well, I didn't put much power into it, so the clown is not dead, just knocked out, Naruto said with a shrug. Ketsueki stared at the blonde for saw a long time before he burst out laughing. You know what demon eyes? I will let you go for now. It is clear that I am not strong enough to fight you at the moment, but know this. I will beat you one day. Count on it. Is that a challenge? Naruto said with a raised eyebrow, his crew crowding behind him. You know it, Ketsuki stated with a smirk. I want to be one of the strongest people on the Grand Line, that is one reason I became a bounty hunter. Now you will help me become stronger than any fool on the Grand Line. We will see about that Ketsueki. I have all the time in the world, let's hope you do too. Naruto smirked before he turned and begun to leave. Wait, demon eyes. It is Naruto. Whatever, just take this. You will need it on the grand line. Ketsueki said as he produced his watch like device. A log pose? Where did you get that? Najiko asked. I picked it off some dead wannabe pirates. Don't worry, I have my own. Ketsueki said, and to help you. It is already set to Whiskey Peak for you. Ah, uh, thanks, Naruto said as he took the log pose and gave it to Nojiko with a smile. He then turned back to Ketsuki, 
only to find that he was already gone, but there was a note in his place. Picking it up, it said, I already know your question, regular compasses don't worry on the grand line because that place has its own magnetic field. Good luck and don't die, demon eyes. Sighing, the blonde turned to Haku and asked, Haku, would you like to join us? Yes I would since you are the only familiar thing in this very strange world. While we are on the sea, I want you to tell me what has happened in your theory as to how I got here. Cool with me, but do you want some new clothes? Not necessary, I have my own in a storage scroll, I like my clothes, Haku politely declined. Well, I guess we should get going before some civilian calls those marines, Naruto said, but he turned back to Ketsuiki's spot because he felt a familiar presence, Itachi. Naruto, Itachi stated and the two were quiet for a few minutes, his companions getting nervous. I wish to join as well. I see now that Sasuke is beyond saving. I am not exactly sure how you get to this world, but I can see you have a better life. Better than what the shinobi world would give you considering that Akatsuki is after the legendary beast within you and taking it out their way would have killed you. Oh wow, I did not know that. Naruto said sadly as he thought of Gara. All right. You can join as well. Maybe the Uchiha clan can have another chance. Thank you, Itachi said with a smile as they all made their way to the ship. While they were walking, Najiko leaned over to the stoic Uchiha and asked, Hey, how did you take care of that sicko? Itachi smiled, which was kind of creepy to her and said, You don't want to know. That made them all shiver. Naruto boredly looked out on the sea from atop the crow's nest. Pa told him he should take a break since he was able to maintain sage mode now. The old frog said he would teach the boy in the frog Kata much later, most likely when they reached the Grand Line. Looking down, he saw Najiko and Sarah's sparing with their guns. He was glad that we're getting along and that the seal protecting the deck was still working. If it didn't, well there would be no ship thanks to all the elemental jutsu and bullets flying all over. Rin and Haku quickly became good friends. They shared the same interests in medical jutsu and they were usually really nice. However, Haku did say the mutt mutt fruit user could be very scary at certain times. Itachi, Dot was hard to figure out. He didn't understand much about the Uchiha other than he kept to himself. Sure he was very helpful and he provided a lot of useful advice, but he could not shake the feeling that Itachi was here for another reason. That or he was thinking too much, after all, all Uchiha were odd in his opinion. Looking back to the sea, he saw a large mountain in the distance. Hey, I think that is reverse mountain, he shouted. Itachi, who was meditating, opened his eyes to see what his blonde captain saw and it was indeed a large mountain. The people in the Lobe town were right about it. Let's just hope they were right when it came to how it was supposed to work. Najiko wiped her brow as she and Sarah stared out at the large mountain in awe. Haku summed it up for everyone, you sure we are supposed to go up? Yeah, that what the stories say. Naruto said as he jumped down next to him, but I am not sure how it works and I pretty much gave up trying to understand how places like this exist. It matters not, Itachi said with his Sharingan activated, but I suggest we move a ship a bit because we will crash. How much? Najiko asked and Itachi and her worked together to steer the ship in a straight line. Naruto, not really getting it, finally did as they came upon an archway and the water went up the mountain. Wow! was all he said as their ship squeezed through the archway and shot like a rocket up the mountain. This is awesome! Naruto shouted as he took his place at the front of the ship, letting the water spray against his skin. As soon as they reached the peak, their ship flew down the waterway at high speeds. That is when Naruto saw. Holy crap! Giant whale! Laboon, the giant whale, seemed to just stare up the mountain. It didn't even seem that it was looking at them. Not good! Sarah's screamed. However, she and Itachi noticed something. As Naruto began to panic and run around the ship like a chicken with its head cut off, his hands were rapidly waving in the air. They saw little sparks of energy flowing off his fingertips. What the heck? Seems his panicking is actually helping us. Itachi calmly replied as he pointed the area surrounding Laboon. The water was swelling with many small whirlpools. Najiko panicked at first but could not help the chuckle that escaped her. Sure she could stop her blonde captain, but that would also screw them and she wanted to survive. Hell, she highly doubted that Naruto knew what he was doing, so he probably didn't know how to do that while calm. Rin smirked when she saw it. 
You know Haku, our captain is kind of an idiot, but he makes this all fun to watch. Haku just chuckled. As soon as they reached the swirling waters, the ship did a few quick 360s and ended up on the other side of the giant whale. Ah, uh, okay that I could have done without. Rin said with swirly eyes. I agree. Sarah's said as she walk around all dizzy like. Itachi, who was standing like nothing happened, hell he never even moved throughout that ordeal, said, that was an interesting display of power. I'll say, Najiko said before she looked around and said, hey, where is Naruto? I am up here, Naruto shouted. They all looked up to see that Naruto was clinging to the middle of the mast. Are you guys saying I that did that? Indeed, Itachi said with a smirk. As Naruto jumped down to the ground, Haku walked up to him and asked, I figured that you did not know what you were doing, but I have to wonder, why did you not use jutsu to stop us? Naruto laughed nervously at that. Well, I really don't have any jutsu that would not hurt the big guy. They all stared at him for that before Sarah's and Najiko planted a kiss on his cheeks while the rest smiled. Their captain was really one of a kind. I am glad for that then. Called out a voice where a small lighthouse was standing. I swear, the last idiot who came here used a cannon to stop their boat. The crew turned as one to see an oddly dressed man in a lawn chair, staring intently at them. He looked strong for an old guy. He had on a pink Hawaiian shirt that odd green and yellow designs in the middle and he wore flip flops. Naruto decided to speak up at that. Dang, that must have hurt. Most of his crew stared at the blonde, thinking why that was the first thing to come about their captain's mouth. Nah, not much. Laboon has gone through worse, the man spoke. Oh, Naruto said with a raised eyebrow. Oh uh, I am Uzumaki di Naruto. Who are you old man? I am not old, I am only 71, I. The man complained before telling him name but not before a long pause, which got on their nerves, am Crocus. And how is 71 not old for this guy? Were the collective thoughts passing through the crew's mind. So who was the guy who shot a cannon at this whale? Laboon was it? Najiko asked. His name was, Crocus began before he did another long pause, Monkey D. Luffy. Najiko's eyes widened at that. Was my sister still with them? Her name is Nami. That orange haired chick, Crocus asked with another long pause as she nodded. Yup, she was pretty loud too and called her crew a bunch of idiots. What is with the long pauses? cried Sarahs. Haven't you ever heard of a running gag? Crocus replied, making the majority of the crew face vault. Anyway, Nojiko said when she recovered. That does sound like her. Itachi decided to interrupt the odd conversation. Why is there a badly drawn pirate mark on Laboon's face? Oh, Crocus asked. Well that is to show his friendship with Luffy. Nice kid but a bit dense if you ask me. Why did he do that though? Naruto asked. Well you see. There was this pirate crew that Laboon followed when he was young, but as they were leaving this place to travel the Grand Line, they told him to stay here and I have been taking care of him since. They promised to see him again, but they never returned. So Luffy made the same promise but also painting that on Laboon's face, and he seemed to like it because he has not banged his hand on the mountain wall like he used to. And knowing that kid, he will make good on his promise. The girls seemed touched by this story while the guys all smiled. All right. I have made a decision, Naruto said suddenly with a look of determination on his face. Already, Haku joked, what about, since I am the guardian of the sea, I will do the same, Naruto said, making everyone's eyes widen. Laboon, cried out happily, making them all have to cover their ears though. Hey, you know, I should have expected that, Najiko said with a smile. Now, what should I paint on Laboon, Naruto said with a thoughtful expression. You have paint supplies on you? Haku asked. Itachi answered for him, of course, he was known as the prank master of Konoha for a reason. Crocus laughed. Oh boy, that had to be fun, some of the time, Itachi said. I had to chase him down many times. I got it, Naruto said suddenly as he jumped high in the air while taking a scroll out of his coat, unsealing his painting supplies in a large poof of smoke. As he was painting, Sarah's leaned over to Najiko and asked, So what do you think he is going to do? The blue haired woman shrugged. Hard telling. Oh, Sarah's said, a little sad about that before she peeked up and jumped up to her blonde captain to help him. XXX When they were done, 
Naruto and Sarah's admired their work with smiles while the others though it could have been better if the last artist actually had some skill. The two didn't do much but it was good nonetheless. Naruto worked on the eyes of the poorly drawn skull, turning the eyes into mini storms. Sarah's was floating above him, drawing the Konoha symbol on the red strap on the straw hat. Crocus smirked at the artwork and said, now that is cool, so what do you call yourselves? We are the Storm Pirates, Naruto announced. Hey, then the paper is true about you kid. You really are strong, but what the heck are you doing on the Grand Line? Crocus asked. Well, I want to hone my powers as the Guardian of the Sea since I have no clue how to use them and also find my mom. I also do want to meet this Luffy guy. Oh, and who would be your mom? Nico Robin. Wow, Crocus said after a moment's pause. I wish you luck kid, just know that has a pretty high bounty or her head, of course so do you but I am just saying. I'll keep that in mind old man. Naruto before he turned to the giant whale. Well Laboon, I may not look like much now, but I am going to be the best guardian of the sea there ever was and I will make sure to come and visit any time that I can. Laboon let out a happy wail as the group set off again. Crocus smiled as they left before he said, so we got to D's on the grand line now. One who wants to be the king of pirates and the other want to be the best guardian of the sea, oh yeah, the grand line is going to hell. He walked off to the lighthouse, chuckling all the way. XXX Itachi was currently meditating near the front of the boat. It was currently almost dusk and most of the crew was lazing about, looking for land, or training in their arts. Soon he felt his captain sitting next to him. The boy had finally got into sage mode and the elder toad told him to take a break. Why he was sitting to him he had no clue. He thought the Blodden would be with his two girls. Can I help you, Naruto? Itachi asked. Naruto smiled. Oh I just came to ask you something. And that would be? Well, Naruto began. You have always watched out for me when I was younger, being literally one of the only Anbu who did his job when protecting me, but now that you are free from the village, the elemental countries, and now in this place, why seek me out? Itachi smirked. This boy, while acting like the fool most of the time, did have brains, that much was for sure. When I did what I did, I was doing to protect you and Sasuke. I was protecting Sasuke from Madara, and old Uchiha and I was protecting you from the Akatsuki, whose leader was Madara as well. Really? Why would you do that for me? Because, like Sasuke, I see you as my brother. Itachi replied. I had hoped that with your personality, that you would be able to keep Sasuke from his own darkness. I told him to hate me and he did, but he also began to hate the world as well and that was not my intention. What was your intention? Naruto asked. When Sasuke had his way and killed me, he would have his life back and be able to choose his own path in life. But, he let his darkness consume him and Madara got a hold of him. Itachi sighed sadly at this. I could not let that happen, so I fought me brother earlier than I had planned and won. However, I did not kill him, I just took his eyes. Maybe, with a new outlook on life, he will change his ways. Man, that is kind of harsh, don't you think? Naruto asked, a little put off by Itachi's story. In our world, life is harsh. I have learned to deal with that at an early age when I had to fight in a war. Itachi sadly said. In this world, I have another chance at life. I decided that with my new powers, I would protect my other brother. Naruto smiled at that. It was nice to have someone looking out for you. Wait, what new powers? Itachi sighed. When you take the eyes of your sibling in our clan and after you gain the Mangekio Sharingan, you can gain the eternal Mangekio Sharingan. Yeah, that is not my thing. Naruto said with a shiver, he was glad he was not born in the Uchiha clan. I know, but I am sort of glad I did. I am no longer dying, Itachi said. He saw Naruto whip his head at him, asking for answers. I had an incurable disease that I gained form over use of the Mangekio Sharingan. I was not fun. I guess not, Naruto said, still I am glad I have someone like you looking out for me. I am glad you feel that way, Itachi said with a smile. Hey, I see land, Najiko shouted from the crow's nest. Naruto got up to see that there was a large island in the distance, but something was off about it. It had large dark clouds hanging over it and had many dead looking trees like you see in horror movies. Um, like looks like a good place to stop, Naruto said sarcastically. Yeah well, we have to rest here while the log pose resets. 
Najioko said as she came down. I am getting a sense of deja vu when I see this place, Sarah said with an eerie expression. As soon as they landed, they were met with an older gentleman that could have been mistaken in Walter from Sarah's past. Hello. The man said with a bow. I am Charles and I welcome you to Damned Isle. Oh yeah, this should be interesting. Naruto said with a dead panned expression. XXX, Master, some pirates have finally arrived at our island. Said the voice of a creepy hunchback man. Charles is fetching them as we speak. Good. A voice said in the darkness as he read eyes opened and the outline like his creepy smile appeared. Let's the harvest begin. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.